25 years. Your home for Minnesota Twins baseball. Twins fans started lining up at Target Field earlier today with two goals in mind. First to snare one of the Josh Willinghammer bobbleheads and secondly to welcome the Twins home from a 10-game road trip. Josh Willingham would love to hammer a couple pitches out of the park tonight. The Twins do arrive home with a 16 and 15 record, just two and a half games back in the AL Central. That's twice as many wins as they had a season ago at this point. They have doubled the fun. Mike Pelfrey adds to, hopes to add to that team total tonight, coming off his best outing of the season last Sunday in Cleveland. He'll face Jason Hamill of the Orioles, who's earned all five of his wins this season on the road. Twins return to the home office tonight for a nine-game homestand, and they hope Tim Lauder to carry over some of the momentum they built on the road. They did build some momentum, and it didn't start off all that great. They lost the first two in Detroit, but yet persevered and won the last game. They went to Cleveland, a hot team in the American League Central. They lost the first two games. Uh, once again, persevered and won the last game. And then they pull into Boston. They were leading the division. They lost an 11 inning game the first night, but once again persevered and won the last three games. So the Minnesota Twins come home with a very, very respectable 5-5 five and five record on the road. Twins pitching will be tested tonight by a Baltimore bunch that features one of the most potent RBI tandems in baseball. Chris Davis and Adam Jones have combined for 54 runs batted in. Jason Hamill hopes to avenge his only loss of the season. The Twins beat him in April. While the Orioles closer, Jim Johnson, looks for a franchise record for consecutive saves tonight. Should be an interesting series starting this evening through the weekend. Twins and the Baltimore Orioles. Up next, Dick and Bert discuss what has been a marvelous May for Maurer and Morneau. Twins and Orioles, the season series opener is next.
Sports is presented by Northland Ford. Visit NorthlandFord.com and your local Northland Ford dealer today. And by Menards. Save big money on all your home improvement needs at Menards. The Twins open up a nice long homestand tonight against the Red Sox and by now, or by, against the Orioles, by now we shouldn't be surprised that in the month of May, Joe Maurer is picking up hits in bunches, nor should we be surprised that in the month of May, Justin Morneau is picking it up as well. And we welcome you to Target Field. Beautiful night for baseball. Happy to have Bert Blylevin back with the Twins Good television. Good to be back. And the Twins coming into this homestand on a high note. No, we should not be surprised that uh, we are reminded after the series in Boston that the Twins have two of the best left-handed hitters in the game, particularly in May. Well, the Twins currently on a three-game winning streak, but on that road trip, we saw some couple hitters get hot. Justin Morneau and Joe Maurer combined hitting 344, and Justin driving in a lot of runs. Why? Because it seems like every hit Joe Maurer has had over on that road trip was an extra base hit, and Justin right there to pick him up to have him score a run. Well, the Twins have a nice long homestand. They hope it'll be a successful one. They came back to the homestand uh, a game above the 500 mark thanks to a good road trip and a nice long homestand begins when we come back. Absolutely gorgeous May evening for baseball and the Twins again showing some resiliency on the road trip losing the first two in Detroit but winning the last game losing the first two in Cleveland winning the last game losing the opener to the Red Sox and then winning the last three that's kind of the way this season's gone. Yeah so far the longest uh, winning streak so far for the Twins a five game winning streak a five game losing streak but what a comeback uh, being down you know they lost that first game in, in Boston. And then they come back and win the next three. So hopefully they can continue their winning streak here tonight. Orioles got into postseason play last year. They have designs on doing it again this year. 
with Adam Jones off to a good start. Chris Davis off to a good start in uh, the pitching department tonight. Starter Hamill off to a good start as well. The Menards batting order for the Orioles. Nate McLeod leading off. Manny Machado, Nick Markakis, Adam Jones, Chris Davis, Matt Wieters, J.J. Hardy, Chris Dickerson, and Alexi Casilla. A couple of and former it'll be Mike Pelfrey on the mound for Mike Pelfrey. He's making his first start against the Orioles. You have to go back when he was a Met back in 2010. Coming off his best start of the year as a twin at that 4-2 win over the Indians in Cleveland where he worked six very good innings. Northland Ford defense for the Twins. They have games uh, without an error until last night. Josh Willingham in left, Aaron Hicks in center, Oswaldo Garcia in right, Ruth and Escobar on the left side of the infield, Carol Morno on the right side, and Ryan Doma does the catching. One thing to watch regarding Pelfrey is outing against the Indians in the uh, series finale. By far his best outing, and within his six innings, fastballs that ranged upward into the mid 90s, which we hadn't seen anything of in his first five starts, and that might have be the best explanation as to why in that start he struck out seven equaling his strikeout total for the first five games combined and one thing Mike Pelfrey has shown I think over his career he's not much of a strikeout pitcher he's a contact type pitcher so you know he's got to hit his spots and keep the pitch that count down early so he can pitch deep into the ball game and Clough in the box we're underway and there's a pitch low ball one we hope to uh, not talk much about umpiring in this three game series. Bruce Dreckman has the plate. Darling Hudson and Meals on the bases, and there's a strike one and one. Yeah, that fastball clocked at 92. Pelfrey, excellent control. Only eight walks in 29 innings pitch with 14 strikeouts. And again, half of those coming in his last start in Cleveland. Another 92 mile per hour fastball up high. Good start for McLeod. This is the guy you want to keep off the bases. The first two hitters for the Orioles. You want to keep them off the bases because of the three, four, five, six guys in that lineup. They can score some runs very quickly. 66, the game time temperature. It'll be cooler and breezier tomorrow. And I think by Tuesday, they're talking about 88 degrees. We're all over the map when it comes to high temperatures during this homestand, but the main thing is it does not look like there's going to be any substantial precipitation. A pop-up foul back into the seats, and again at 92, and that's where Terry Ryan said Pelfrey will sit with his fastball at 92, maybe occasionally 93, but he was as surprised as anybody that he was clocked at 95 <laughs> in Cleveland. Well, again, he's coming off that Tommy John surgery. It's going to take a while to build that arm strength back up. And another foul pop over by the tarp and Ploof runs out of room. When you're not a strikeout pitcher, this is what happens. You know, McLeod is kind of a slap type hitter, fouling off some pitches, getting that pitch count up very quickly. So what Pelfrey would like to do is get some quick outs here against a very good hitting Oriole ball club. Another 2-2. Third two strike foul. Alfrey, 29 years old, of course, in his first season with the Twins, signed a one year contract over the winter. Spent seven seasons with the New York Mets. He was a Mets number one pick back in 2005 out of Wichita State University. Breaking ball, and McLeod wastes that one. Or as a former pitcher, I did not like hitters like this that just keep fouling it off, fouling it off. You know your idea especially in today's game that pitch count so important that you early in the ball game you'd like to throw maybe about 40 pitches in the first three innings but at bats like this are not the way to start pitch number nine. So five two strike fouls for McLeod in the opening at bat. Yeah McLeod in his second season with the Orioles ninth major league season. Hitting at 299, he has 11 stolen bases in 12 attempts. So this is another reason you want to keep this guy off the bases if you can. 
Pulled to the right side. Nice pickup. Carroll flips to Morno and finally McLeod is taken care of. In nice his last start. Play. Take a look at Pelfrey in his last start. And we talked about the increased velocity, but also increased tempo. Yeah, you know, that's one thing Rick Anderson is trying to get him to do, pick up that tempo. But last Sunday in Cleveland, he won the ball game four to two. Six innings, only four hits allowed. One walk, he allowed one run. His first quality start of the year, this being his seventh start of the year here tonight. And now Machado, and there's another foul ball. Machado, a youngster, only 20 years old, already in his second season with the Orioles. Came up last August for the Orioles. Made quite an impression. One and one. Missing inside two and one. Now, one thing that might explain the Pelfrey and his high strikeout total in his last start against Cleveland, the Indians, as we said throughout the weekend series, can and will have a batting order, nine batters, all of whom by season's end will strike out more than 100 times. They are a strikeout team. They'll hit it over the fence and they'll strike out a lot, and the Orioles a little bit less so. They've got some guys who'll finish with more than 100 strikeouts. Just not a whole lineup full of them. Least to center, a sharp base hit. And Pelfrey falling behind Machado. Yeah, 3 1 fastball right there. Again, it's so important to pitch ahead in the count, but 3 1, he comes under the fastball. Machado lining it right back up the middle. A one out single, and now Nick Marcakis. Kekas the designated hitter by default. But Joe Walter said no particular reason to DH him. He's a really good right fielder, but they needed somebody to slide into the DH spot, and so it's Mark Kekas tonight. Off speed pitch missing. Ball one. That one just a little bit off the fastball we've seen at 90 miles per hour here in the stadium. Well, Pelfrey, and this is his seventh start. Only three double plays turned behind him in his first six starts. Machado at first base, four stolen bases in five attempts. Oh. Orioles like to run 24 stolen bases in 30 attempts. Twins have yielded just seven stolen bases on the year and just 16 stolen base attempts. He falls behind Marquez 2 and 0. You know, Dick, and that's a good number that you mentioned right there. What are they? Have thrown out seven of 15, I believe. Uh, nine of uh, 16. Nine, nine yep. of 16. I yep. mean, that just that credits the starting staff or the pitching staff in general on holding on potential base stealers. Try to change the tempo a little bit. Don't hold it as long. Sometimes hold it longer. Give your catcher Mauer or Domit a chance to uh, throw out that potential base stealer. 3 and 0 to Marquez Jones on deck. And you can't even say the Twins have the same catchers behind the plate because in reality the one guy who did the best job throwing runners out last year is Drew Butera and he hasn't been with the team this year. Three and oh. Marcakis hits one to center. Hicks. Retreating. There's a catch. And bluffing a tag is Marcakis. So Hicks does a nice job a routine catch but he got rid of it quickly because as you said the Orioles like to run. Doesn't necessarily mean through the stolen base. Right. I mean, right there, 3 0. You know, Mar Marcakis had the green light. He flew to center field. But now you're looking at the meat part of the lineup, and that being Davis and Jones. You can see where they rank in top RBI duos. Only Cabrera and Fielder are better at driving in runs so far this year. Twins have faced the other two tandems just in the last week or so on the last road trip. Started in Detroit, finished in Boston. 
Jones had his left foot x-rayed after fouling a ball off his foot. And no break, so he's back in the lineup. Pelfrey after that long at bat with McLeod has had a tough time throwing strikes ever since 20 pitches in the inning and just 11 strikes. Yeah you know a lot of guys you're talking about that left foot look at the gear that he has almost like a, sh a catcher shin guard wrapped all the way around uh, that shoe protect that left foot area. Pelfrey misses and falls behind Jones 2 and 0. Again, these are the type of innings that Pelfrey we've seen him have 20, 25 pitches an inning. And that's why you can only go five, maybe five and a third innings. There's a strike on the outside corner. Pelfrey coming into this outing averaging 19 pitches per inning. Now, you compare that to, say, Diamond or Correa. Diamond came in, he's averaging 15 pitches per inning. Correa 14 pitches per inning at home you say well that's only four or five pitches different but you times that by five that's another inning basically by my California man deep to center Hicks running after it and gliding onto the warning track to make the catch some erratic control for Mike Pelfrey in the first but he gives up a hit but no runs. Glad the team is home after a good road trip. Ron Gardenhire, uh, very glad to be home after what seemed like a two and a half week road trip. But our batting order for the Hope Stand uh, debut Jamie Carroll, Joe Maurer, Josh Willingham, Justin Morno, Trevor Plouffe, Ryan Doman, Oswaldo Arcia, Aaron Hicks, and Eduardo Escobar. And for the second time this season, the Twins will take a look at Jason Hamill. Now, he comes in at his ballgame 5 and 1. The only loss coming against the Twins back on Sunday, April 7th in Baltimore. Twins won that game 4 to 3, even though he pitched in to the seventh inning. Five wins, all of them on the road. So he's been tough on the road. We'll see how he fares here at Target Field. First time he's pitched here at Target Field. Carroll with good numbers against Hamill six hits 15 at bats that's why he gets the nod tonight over Brian Dozier and a belt high strike. Hamill pretty good fastball and mix in a curveball slider and a changeup. All four pitches. In his second season with the Orioles. And a foul two strikes. Northland for defense for the Orioles, and they are a very good defensive ball club. A lot of speed in the outfield. McLeod, Jones, Dickerson, Machado, they say someday will win a gold glove. J.J. Hardy already has. Casey and Davis on the right side. And Matt Wieter's a gold glove defender as well. 
Two strikes to Jamie Carroll. Up the middle. Backhanded by Casilla. His throw wide of the first baseman, and Carroll scampers back to the bag. Nice pickup by Casilla, but his throw nowhere near first base. And Carroll will get an infield hit. Well, well, yeah, would have been a great play by Alexi Casilla. Of course, he wore a twins uniform for many years. We've seen him make great plays. Right here, the mound slows it down a little bit, but Casilla gets to it and then it's throw up the line. And uh, Orioles pretty lucky right here. This ball did not go into the camera well. Instead, it deflects off the wall and comes back into play. Now Joe Maurer, who Thanks to his excellence in May and his deep affection for Fenway Park, has the average up to 309. Up and away, ball one. Maurer and the Twins uh, play paddle ball against the wall and left for a good part of the four game series. Well, it's been a roller coaster ride for Joe, hasn't it? I mean, here you look at that road trip hitting 324, driving in a couple runs, six doubles, six of the 11 doubles coming on that road trip. Mauer takes a strike, one and one. Well, first 14 ball games, they came out red hot. Then he went through that little streak where he is struggling getting hits, but he's hot again. One and one. With Mauer DHing tonight. Twins played a night game, obviously, in Boston. Landed about two o'clock this morning. Ron Gardenhire just deciding, oh, we'll let Ryan Domit catch and give Joe a little and his legs a little bit of a break tonight. I like what Gardy said. I think it was on that last homestand where you know when you come here to Target Field. Joe Maurer is going to be in the lineup, whether it's behind the plate, whether it's DHing, whether it's going to be at first base. You know, Gardy's attitude is, hey, a lot of people they, they pay good money to come to a ball game, right. and they want to see Joe play, and he's going to try to get Joe in that lineup as long as he's healthy every day here at Target Field. Tom Kelly did it with Kirby Puckett. Mm -hmm. Sam Mealy did it with Harmon Killebrew. One and two. Being watched closely at first. The twins uh, have not stolen uh, as much uh, as many bases as I think they were hoping to. A lot of that has to do with the uh, Hicks and his struggles. He was considered to be one of the top base stealers on the team. He just hasn't been on base enough. Mm -hmm. 13 steals and 19 tries for the Twins. Up and away, two and two. Well, Hamill coming into this ball game, 42 innings pitch, 16 walks with 26 strikeouts. Again, very good on the road. 5 and 0 on the road, a very good earned run average of 3.41. Making his sixth road start. And his fifth career start against the Twins. And Maurer dumps it behind third, long run from McLeod. That's a foul ball by about five feet. Power over the eight games. Picking the batting average up from the 280s to 309. Now look at his slugging percentage. A lot of extra base hits. Six extra base hits. Doubles for Joe Power. And there's eight runs scored. I guarantee you Justin probably drove in all eight of those runs. Two and two. Driven to right. Dickerson has it go over his head. Carroll to third. Maurer to second. And unless we hear otherwise, we'll give Maurer a double. Another double. That would be double number 12. 
almost like a knuckleball. That's what it seemed like for Dickerson out in right field. Now, Marcakis is a gold glove winner in right field. A breaking ball hung right there. Joe hits it sharply, and that ball maybe went a little bit further than Dick and Dickerson expected. Reaches out, the ball gets by him, and they do give Maurer a double. And our viewing audience heard just a few moments ago what a great defensive outfield the Orioles had. Who told them that? <laughs> Here's Josh Willingham. Even the best make errors. Infield back for Willingham, who did not have a good road trip, and he takes ball one. Field playing Willingham a shade or two to the opposite field. Inside 2 0. Twins started the year at home by taking two out of three against the Tigers, and they went to Baltimore, played the Oriole home opener, lost that game, but then won the next two. Trying to win a series opener for a change. There's a chopper left side. Carroll's going to score. Machado flips to first. Willingham gets a run batted in. And he puts the Twins on the board. Josh picking up his 15th RBI of the year. Power had to stay at second base. Good jump right there by Jamie Carroll. Reading that little short hopper over to Machado. He scores a first run. Willingham picks up the RBI. And now Morno, who has taken over the team lead and runs batted in with 21. 21 runs batted in in 31 team games played. Morno's played in 30 of them. Uh, outside, ball one. So you take Morno's numbers and a run batted in for every. Two runs batted in for every three games played. And now you've got a guy in triple digits and home runs or RBIs again. That's what the Twins are hoping. And that's what Justin is hoping. One and one. A good series for the Twins to play well because Cleveland and Detroit are playing each other this weekend. Twins will have a chance every night out to pick up a game on one team or the other that sits ahead of them in the American League Central standings. The other team being Kansas City, and they're hosting the Yankees this weekend. Two and one to Justin Morneau. Fouled away, two and two. Jason Hamill, 30 years old, originally came to the big leagues with the Tampa Bay Rays, also spent time with the Colorado Rockies. And now Morno flips another one foul. He was the opening day starter for the uh, Orioles this year that opened up in uh, Tampa Bay, and he won that ball game against the Rays. Two and two to Morno. Full count with Plouffe on deck. What Hamill's trying to do is rare. Only four pitchers have won their first six road decisions since 1920, and one of them, Jim Perry, in 1970 for the Twins. And that was the year that Jim Perry won 24 ball games and won the uh, Cy Young Award. Breaking ball got Morno for out number two. Hamill picks up a strikeout, freezes Justin, definitely looking for something else, and then dropped that big slow curveball for his first strikeout. So now Plouffe. Twins have an infield hit and a double given Maurer on a liner soaring over the head of the right fielder. Now Plouffe takes inside, ball one. Both starters throwing a lot of pitches in that first inning. Belfry threw 
23 pitches. Hamill right now with 20. Driven to right field. And Dickerson makes the play here to end the inning. A couple of hits start the inning. Carroll scores a run and the Twins take a 1 0 lead. as we head to the second inning. Mike Pelfrey continues to be one of the better stories in baseball just a year removed from Tommy John's surgery. Now, he hasn't always had his good stuff, but Ron Gardner has stood by him through the ups and downs so far. And today, Gardy told me Pelfrey had to be able to trust he could throw without something popping, and now he's past that point. He is one of our starters. He will continue to be one of our starters. And guys, everybody hoping Pelfrey can build off a solid outing in his last start. Yeah, thank you, Jamie. Someone that's had elbow surgery like I did, I know what Kelfrey's going through. There's that little, there's that little demon in there that's always there saying, you know, is it going to hurt again? But uh, hopefully for Kelfrey that uh, he will get through that. And maybe last outing was a good sign. Delivering ball one to Chris Davis, then Matt Weeders and J.J. Hardy. A slower breaking ball gets a swing and a miss. One and one. When the Twins were in Baltimore, Davis had homered in the first four games of the year, hit a big grand slam against the Twins, leading the Orioles to a win in the opener. Now he hooks one over the head of Morno into the right field corner, chased by Arcia. And Davis has a double. And he'll hold up there. So a leadoff double for Davis, and that'll bring up Chris Weeders. Yeah, Davis in his third season with the Orioles came into this year a 258 career hitter, but he has been red hot hitting 307. That ball left up right there, and Davis turns on it and hits it down that right field line. His 10th double of the year. The deepest part of that right field corner, and now Weeters. Strike on the outside corner. I think it's the first batter since the leadoff man McLeod, where Pelfrey's gotten ahead of the batter. One and one. Waiters a switch hitter, hitting 232 as a left-handed hitter. Two of his four home runs as a left-handed hitter. Check swing, and it's two and one. When Pelfrey had his good outing against the Indians, he shut down a lineup that was bashing the ball all over Progressive Field. 
through 92 pitches, 57 strikes, roughly a two strike to one ball ratio. Driven the left, and Willingham is there to make the catch. Pretty well hit ball for the first out of the inning. And that'll bring up JJ Hardy. When you join the Twin Season Ticket family, you'll be hitting the sweet spot. Purchase any of the Twin Season Ticket packages and receive 10% off food, beverage, and merchandise bought at Target Field. Call 833 Twins or visit twinsbaseball.com to check out the options, learn about the cool benefits that come along with Twin Season Tickets. Here's Hardy. Yeah, Wieters hit that ball sharply, but Dave is still at second base, so Twins get a break right there. And again, Pelfrey misses with the first pitch. Hardy hitting in the low 200s with six home runs. Hanging in the air to center, and Hicks. Has a play and makes it out number two. That's why that at bat by readers right there is so important. If he could advance Davis, that ball's hit deep enough where JJ Hardy could have picked up an RBI to tie the game. So a little at bats sometimes like readers had go unnoticed. A couple fly ball outs. Here's Chris Dickerson. Dickerson new to the Oriole organization has spent time with the Reds the Brewers and the Yankees signed as a free agent over the winter. Ball one again. Dickerson can play some in center field and has for Adam Jones. Sliced foul one on one. An extra outfielder for the Orioles. And last year in the second half of the year, Lou Ford filled right. that spot for the Orioles. Yeah, he did a good job for him. He's now down in Triple A for the Orioles. Pelfrey, one good pitch away from pitching around the leadoff double. A foul ball, one and two. Where it kite came from, we don't know. But Pelfrey on that Sunday afternoon in Cleveland had a uh, the ability to get the Cleveland batters to swing and miss. We haven't seen any of that here yet tonight. A lot of foul balls. I don't think there's been a swing and a miss all night long yet. Popped up behind second. Escobar out calling for it. And the Orioles get a leadoff double from Chris Davis, but he never budges from second base.
for the Twins in the second inning after finishing the road trip very strongly. Yeah, a couple home runs in that uh, four-game series in Chicago, or excuse me, Boston on Tuesday. A big solo home run in the seventh inning off Ryan Dempster, and then the next day, Wednesday, a two-run home run off of Alan Webster in that 15-8 win for the Twins. He found something in Cleveland and carried it through Boston. Had a really good series at Boston and hit his first home run at Progressive Field. Bounce chopped up the line. In fact, it's off his foot. And it's a strike one and one. You say he found it in Cleveland? That's where I lost my curveball one time. Is that I, right? I had, to, I had to go find it up in the upper deck. It was up there. It scared me for a while. You, yeah, I didn't lost your fastball. No, no, I lost my curveball. You lost your curveball. Yeah, it was up in the upper deck. I was shagging one day in the outfield and I saw it up there and I had to go get it. Nobody ever sat up there anyway at that old stadium. Two and one to Doman. So I'm glad he found something in Cleveland. Cleveland missed you. I don't know if you missed Cleveland. You weren't on the last road trip, but uh, Cle no. Cleveland missed you. Yeah, I, I, I enjoy Cleveland. Are you going there this year? Yes. You are. Yes. It's Detroit. I'm not going to. <laughs> Three and one to Doman and Arcia and Hex. <laughs> and Doman takes a walk. Well, the Twins get the leadoff man on for the second inning in a row. And we'll see what Oswaldo Arcia can do the day after his 22nd birthday. As you know, birthdays are special, and they were for Arcia yesterday. What a birthday he had. A triple right there, his first major league triple. And then off of John Lackey, a home run, a two run home run in the Twins' five to three win. So happy birthday. He's got 364 more days to wait. He's got a seven game hitting streak through which he is hitting 444. And while hitting the home run, pulling it into the bullpen was a significant thing, and the triple off the fence in left center, significant too. The night before, he hit the ball sharply, picked up some singles to the left side of the field, his opposite field side, making the adjustment. A with two strikes, and then B, recognizing how he was being pitched. And realizing, you know, if I try to pull the ball, I'm just going to make it out. So let me try to hit it hard the other way. He really shortened his stride, if not eliminated it altogether. Ron Gardner said today, he called it a flat-footed swing, where he just, with his strength, and you can tell by looking at him, he's got immense strength. One and one. Out of right, another base hit. Off-speed pitch, pulled to right. Doma checks in at second base. Yeah, that breaking ball left up a little bit. Almost the same location that Joe Maurer ended up hitting that ball sharply over the head of Dickerson. So Hamill leaves a pitch up after walking Domit. Take a look at the location. That breaking ball about belt high and a good swing. Garcia continuing to make good contact. That looked like the same slider hanging in about the same spot that Maurer poked right. over the head of, uh, of uh, Dickerson in the first inning. Yep. Here's Aaron Hicks. And a chance to do some second inning damage. Let's see if Hicks maybe bunts right here. Try to advance the runners. Twins have a one nothing lead. Aaron Hicks showing no bunt there. Machado in on the grass at third. Some encouraging signs for Hicks. A double in the ball game last night, a ball that was smoked and would have been a home run everywhere but Fenway Park. And now 2 0. Yeah, and that game back in April, uh, Hamill faced Hicks late in the game in the seventh inning. Hicks picked up the RBI single that scored the fourth run, and the Twins ended up winning that ball game 4 to 3. Hicks, as was uh, his pattern early. Held hitless in the entire series until his last at bat against Jason Hamill, and he got a big base hit. 2 and 0. Twins had their first two batters reach in the first inning and got one run out of it. Yeah, 
three and oh with Escobar on deck. And now Hamill, 31 pitches, 16 strikes. Hamill struggling. The walk Gomet. Marcia left a breaking ball up, base hit, now falls behind Aaron Hicks. Takes a strike. Uh, Hicks has to look for that same pitch again. When you're a pitcher out there and you face that lower part of the lineup, you don't want to walk these guys right here. You want to make them swing the bat. So Hicks, I'm sure 99%, he's going to get another fastball right there. And he sends it up the middle, a base hit. Doman around third, he'll be held, and they're loaded up. Jones throw well up the line, but with nobody out. Doman not the fleetest of foot. Hicks gets a base hit, well, and they're loaded up now for Escobar. That's a good at bat by Hicks. You know why? In a 3 1 count, he didn't try to, you know, hit the ball out of the ballpark. He took that pitch right back up the middle and loaded the bases for the Twins. Good swing right there by Aaron Hicks. And you can see Jones was not playing very deeply and alertly Joe Vavra telling Doman, hey, stay at third. Here is Escobar. Bases loaded, nobody out. And Escobar with a swing and a miss. Our Sanford Health injury report. Pedro Floramon told me late in batting practice today his leg is fine. He expects to be able to play again tomorrow night. Yeah, you said that he just tweeted that the hamstring when he took, you know, went across first base and uh, he's, guess what? He's dead a day. <laughs> Up to Escobar. And it's one and one. Uh, Escobar, a switch hitter, hitting both good from both sides. His home run came as a left-handed hitter. But he's hitting 313 as a left-handed hitter. He's driven in five runs so far in limited playing time. They're swinging a miss at a 93 mile per hour fastball. Yeah, big swings right there. See if he tries to cut this swing down a little bit. It's one of the things Tom Bernanski has been encouraging his hitters, though, too, is to let it rip. Don't go to your two strike swing before there are two strikes. Right. And we've seen Escobar drive the ball. Didn't have the best of road trips. He entered the road trip hitting 438. Got a piece, fouled it back. Escobar's only home run so far this year came in Kansas City against Jeremy Guthrie. He's, he's, he's pitching really well for the Royals, 5 and 0. Oh. Beat the Orioles last night. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hamill, the guy that the Orioles got for Guthrie in the uh, offseason trade before 2012. And he chased upstairs. And. Hamill kept going up there until he got a swing and a miss for strike three. Hamill got a big strikeout right there for the first, first out. Tomorrow, soccer returns to Fox. Manche I didn't know they left. Manchester City takes on Wigan Athletic in one match for England's most storied trophy. The FA Cup Final with Budweiser is Saturday at noon. Eastern only on Fox. And now Carroll singled up the middle. In the first inning and scored. Bases loaded, one out. And a strike. And Carroll with great success against Hamill, seven for 16. Hoping to get an awfully big hit here in the second inning. Make good contact, and Hamill drops that slow curveball and gets ahead 0 and 2. Two strikes to Carroll. And a foul. Carroll just three runs batted in on the season. He's not expected to be a, an RBI guy. Has scored 10 runs in limited duty. Two strikes. Inside, one and two. Uh, 
about Jamie Carroll, you know, not a lot of power. So, of course, Dickerson in right field, Jones in center, playing very shallow. A lot of Carroll's hits going to right field. And call third strike. He hit the inside corner, and Carroll disagrees as he walks away from Bruce Drinkman, two down. Well, two big strikeouts for Hamill. Carroll thinking it's inside. You see where Weeders wanted that ball away. And that ball sure looks like it's inside, but he gets the call. Right over the stripe of the batter's box. So now it's left to Maurer, who hit a line drive over the head of Dickerson for a double in the first. Double, a pair of outfield hits, no runs on the board yet here in the second inning. Ball one. One and O to Mauer. Strike on the outside corner. Hamill only gave the Orioles 118 innings last night. He wasn't healthy or last year, I mean. Yeah, he had knee surgery in July. That kind of shut down his year last year. One and one. Driven foul one and two. There he was. He might prosper if he got away from Coors Field. And maybe the prospering will begin in 2013 now that he's healthier. Remember, you mentioned that trade, you know, Hamill for Jeremy Guthrie. Guthrie went over to Coors Field. He didn't like it there either. Not too many pitchers like pitching in that ballpark. One and two to Joe Mauer. Up the middle and through for a hit. Dolman will score. Arcia being waved in and a big two out hit for Maurer. It's three nothing twins and he's two for two in this homestand. That's what you like to see. Good guys picking up other good guys. Joe Maurer after two straight strikeouts by Hamill. Maurer kick taking that high fastball right back up the middle. Dolmet scores, Arcia scores, and the Twins take a 3 0 lead. Mauer picking up RBI number 11 and 12 with that base hit up the middle. Rick Adair, the pitching coach, making a quick trip to the mound. So close to getting out of a real mess. You strike out Escobar, you get Carroll looking. You get two strikes on Mauer, but in reality, we've known it for years. <laughs> To get two strikes on him and the at bats really just beginning. Actually, Maurer has him right where he wants him. <laughs> and he had him right where he wanted him. Joe went hitless in his last 16 at bats of the last homestand and then found it again on the road trip with hits in his first two at bats in this homestand. Did he find it in Cleveland too or Detroit? I think he actually found it in Detroit. In Detroit? Tempted to ask you what you lost in Detroit, but <laughs> probably ought not to go there. No. Ball or strike one. <laughs> strike one. Willingham drove in the first run with a ground ball in the first. Ryan Doma talked about how he just felt better about himself once he hit his first home run, and that seemed to make everything click for him. And now Willingham might be in that same spot. It's been a while since he's homered. And he's really struggled with a lot of strikeouts. So maybe just one swing will get him going. Yeah, a lot of pitches for Jason Hamill. 50 right now, and not a good strike to ball ratio. Willingham homering on the 29th of April. Well, three of his five home runs have been hit here at Target Field. Two Josh strikes. Willingham. Bouncer to short. Came up on Hardy, stayed with it, makes the play, the inning ends. Three singles, a walk, a pair of runs for the Twins. It's 3 0.
on Fox Sports North is presented by USAA, proudly serving the financial needs of current and former military members and their families. Run on the first for the Twins, two in the second. Mike Pelfrey's pitched around a one out single and a leadoff double. He'll face Alexi Casilla. Yeah, see if he can get ahead right here. Hit strike one. He's unable to do that. Only two of nine batters have been able to get ahead in the count. Now a three run lead. Want to throw strikes. And a strike. Brian Roberts is disabled. He had surgery for a torn hamstring. Ryan Flaherty is struggling. And so Casilla getting a chance to play some at second base. One and one. And a strike called. Casilla with 35 at bats, a couple of doubles, five singles. To center, and Hicks coming in, and he plays it on a hop. Casilla gets a base hit. Thought about making uh, the diving attempt and thought better of it. The leadoff single for Alexi Casilla. You can submit a question online at carsoup.com slash baseball. Patrick in Apple Valley. Wondering does Mike Pelfrey re rely more on pitching the contact or the strikeout? I think he's more of a contact pitcher. Of course he struck out seven in that last outing in Cleveland. But over his career he's had a career high eight strikeout game. That's as high as he's ever had the most strikeouts in one ball game. So he's more of a contact type pitcher. Strike one, a 91 mile per hour fastball. Pelfrey making his 156th major league start. He has 53 major league wins. Breaking ball. McLeod waits and misses. Two strikes. You know, Twins fans have paid attention and they they found the starting pitching the last two years kind of hard to watch because it was a pitch to contact staff but the Contact was too solid, and a lot of the pitch to contact uh, contact ended up in the seats. Two strikes, and McLeod fouls it back. But what I think we've seen here in the first five six weeks of the season, Bert, is you know a pitch to contact approach can be good, and and can really benefit a pitching staff. There's a reason Kevin Correa. With seven innings or more in his first five starts, he's a pitch to contact guy. He got some quick outs and thereby saved the bullpen some of the work that uh, they might ordinarily been asked to do. And that's exactly what Scott Diamond is. Casilla takes off and an easy steal. We saw Casilla with the Twins with a stolen base percentage of, yeah. I think it was 85%, something like that. Yeah, now he's. Uh, Three for three for Baltimore. Well, he got a great jump right there. As a twin, he stole 71 bases, caught only nine times, and as an Oriole, he's three for three in stolen base attempts. Runner at second. Nobody out. One and two for Nate McLeod. No, you're right, Dick. I think the whole staff, they really don't have, you know, a guy that's going to go out and, you know, strike out a batter per inning. Most of the strikeout guys are in the bullpen. And Pelfrey goes upstairs to get a strikeout. Yeah, we've talked about strikeouts, and Pelfrey picks up his first strikeout. And that'll bring up Machado. And McLeod kind of swinging out of the on that high fastball, swung right through it. So one down, and Machado who's single to center his first time up. Ball just off the plate. Well, that's a good pitch right there. Just missing. I think I've seen one 93 mile per hour fastball from Pelfrey. This one at 92. Watch Domit sit outside. Wow. Want to know? Long look at second and a chopper to third. Loof fires on the run on target two down and still stuck at second is Casilla. 
Pepsi fans of the game probably see more Twins fans here than at Fenway Park. I would think. There they are. <laughs> well, here we go. Let's see if the telly works. You were here by circle, Pepsi fans of the game. Hey, we got a good crowd here tonight, Bert. It's Friday night. The weather's pleasant, and uh, even in the upper far reaches of the upper deck. You know, and I flew in last night from Fort Myers, Dick, and even at the airport waiting for our bags, there were people talking about the Twins. You know, I mean, coming off a, a very good road trip, there's that buzz again, I think, that, yeah. uh, that's felt here. And that, that's a good feeling. Here's Mark Kakis, runner at second, two away. Off speed pitch, down and away, ball one. I had no trouble with my uh, my suitcases. How about your suitcases? Oh, you heard about that, did you? Somebody told me that. A week and a half long road trip. Suitcase worked fine. It opened. It shut until I tried to leave Boston. Couldn't get it to shut. <laughs> and what did you do? Well, we ended up getting a, a huge plastic bag. It looked like a body bag, and we put everything in the. The suitcase included into the. You it, kept the suitcase. Why didn't you just throw the suitcase away? Because I, it's property of the Minnesota Twins. It oh. wasn't. It wasn't uh, for me to do that. If I'd have done what I wanted to do with the suitcase, it would not have <laughs> made the return trip from Boston. I can promise you that. You're probably sweating a little bit, weren't you? Did you, you know. Did you throw the bag over a, your shoulder? It looked like Santa Claus. You th know. There's an old saying in broadcasting. You know. What you see in a hotel room, what you hear in a hotel room, you need to leave in the hotel room. But apparently, they I should put that in the clubhouse too. <laughs> Three and zero on a walk to Marquecas Phil's first base. And now Adam Jones comes to the plate as the tying run. Yeah, the first walk of the ball game for Pelfrey. But it comes with two outs here. Now you got the dangerous Adam Jones at the plate. Pelfrey's done a good job of keeping the ball in the ballpark. Only two home runs allowed. This is his seventh start. Jones hit a fly ball to center his first time up. Snap bat and a roller up the line to see it nearly got hit by the bat. And it'll be a base hit. A painful one for Casilla. Look where the barrel of the bat ended up. Yeah. In short left field. And I don't know how Casilla, how close that came. But the bases will be loaded with two outs. You talk about getting into the kitchen of a hitter. That ball inside, oh, my and my God. goodness, look where that ball ends up, too. Hugging that line. Got on the grass and just stayed there. So they're loaded up two down and not Chris Davis. Davis with a double. He hooked one into the right field corner his first time up. And the Twins leading three to nothing, but the Orioles. With a pair of hits and a walk. Yeah, Orioles can still score some runs. 20 times this year already, they scored five or more runs in a ball game. So this is not a lineup that you want to take uh, in a ball game or an in, inning. In a, in, a, in a ball game, five or more runs in a game, average five or. More oh, runs I see what you're saying. Okay. One and zero oh to Davis. Deep to left field, a little slice and slice foul, but you can see the power of Chris Davis. That ball hit off the limestone to the opposite field. One and one. Remember that grand slam he hit? He hit it to left yep. field in in Baltimore. Dolman's going to come to the mound here. They're going to discuss this. This was a Camden Yards pitch down and away. Oh, and off the, Tyler Robertson. On the Orioles opening day, home opener. The Twins lost that game nine to five and then proceeded to win the next two ball games. Pelfrey's pitched around the trouble he's found himself in. 
After the leadoff double in the second, he got the next three men, but now here in the third, the Orioles mounting a threat with two gone. One and one to Chris Davis. High fly, center field. Love those sacrifice flies. Hicks ends the inning, and Pelfrey leaves three more aboard in the third. Good trip by Dolman. North is presented by Century Link, your link to what's next. By Grand Casino, the best stories start here. And by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, for the everyday competitor in all of us. Beautiful night for baseball in downtown Minneapolis. And the Twins open up. With a 3 nothing lead on the Orioles, Justin Morneau leading off the bottom of the third, taking ball one. Down the right field line. That's a fair ball. Morneau digs for two. And it's a leadoff double for Justin Morneau. That appeared to be again one of those hanging sliders that Hamels left in there to the left-handed batters. Well, that's a fastball right there, but he has left both pitchers have left some balls up and good swing right there by Justin driving that ball into that corner at the 328 mark. Dickerson has to get it back in, but it's a double for Justin, his eighth double of the year. The Twins pick up their sixth hit already against Hamill. Here's Plouffe, fly ball to right, his first time up. Up the middle, Morneau will advance. Hardy skips to his left and makes the throw. And Plouffe lost most of his bat. And Morneau alertly scampers up a base, one away. Well, that, remember Weeders, you know, with, uh, with Davis at second, you know, he was unable to move him. Even though that's an out right there, that's a productive out by Trevor Plouffe getting Morneau over to third base, now giving Domit an RBI opportunity. And that's going to bring in the infield, I would think, for the Orioles. Down 3 nothing. They do shorten up the infield. Domit walked leading off the second and scored the second twin run. And a drive to right. Dickerson back makes the catch. How about that? Morneau doubles. One pitch moves him to third. The next pitch brings him in. There you go. I mean, you, that that's good team baseball right there. Proof doing his job. Justin getting a good jump. Good scoot over to third. And Doman on the next pitch drives him in. Twins lead four nothing. Something to be said for that, isn't it? I mean, 
when you get a run this way, that's got to lift everybody in the dugout up maybe a little bit more than somebody hitting a solo home run because it's it involves more people and it's a sign that you're playing good baseball. And it's a team. It's a team run right there. Justin's double. Move him over. Boom. More uh, Domit picks up his 13th RBI. Garcia wasn't even with the Twins in Baltimore. Start of the year. Takes strike one. Singled and scored. Extending his hitting streak to eight. Check swing. And a strike call by Jerry Meal. I like what Tim Lobner talked about RC in the pregame. He called him kind of a project when he came up. Remember Darren Masterani put on a disabled list. Twins brought up RC and Gardy said, you know what, this guy needs to play. And you know, he started off a little slow, but boy, he's been on fire over the last 10 days. He's been a red hot. Hit to right, hit to left, two more tonight. Yeah, what Tim Lobner say was is an experiment. Mm -hmm. just you gotta run him out here because he's one of your prospects. You don't want him to languish on a bench either here or in Rochester, so he's going to play. And the, you know, the playing time now has come at the expense of Chris Parmalee, who was in right field. So a hit for Arcee, and here's Hicks. I'm not even going to mention it anymore until he does it. Got a base hit his first time up in the second inning. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Can I say it? Yeah, you've been gone still, for four weeks. He's still looking for his first multi-hit game. <laughs> That's a good way to start, though. A base hit yeah, yeah. in your first at-bat. Yeah. I was watching. <laughs> Two and oh. oh. Remember, he, he got that count to 3 1 or 3 0. Oh, he took that fastball and then on the 3 1 pitch, lined that ball right back up the middle for base hit to center field. And now Hamels falls behind again. Two and one. Even though Hicks has not hit much, leading American League rookies in runs scored, runs batted in, RC is right behind him. American League rookies and walks, outfield assists. And even though the hits haven't come as often as he would like, I think we said during the last homestand, we're seeing other parts of his game that make him such a prized commodity for the Twins. The flare to left, and Clouth is over to make the catch. Another run for the Twins. They've scored in every inning so far. They need it 4 nothing.
Four nothing good start to this homestand for the Twins. They've scored in every inning, and Mike Pelfrey has wobbled through three innings, but not given up any runs yet. Yeah, big thing for Pelfrey. He needs a quick inning right here. 55 pitches in the first three innings. Too many pitches, and he's been doing that, falling behind. And only able to get strike one on four of the 15 batters he's faced so far. Weeders, Hardy, and Dickerson facing Pelfrey here on the four. 2 0. Oh. Pelfrey, one walk, one strikeout. He's given up four hits. Worked out of that bases loaded jam in the third. There's a fly to center. He's keeping Hicks busy tonight. Now, one down. Let's get caught up as to what's happened so far. Well, in the first inning, Joe Maurer, a double after the Carroll infield single. The RBI picked up by Josh Willingham. There's a Maurer double. Two for two for Joe Maurer in the ball game. Picked up a couple RBIs. Garcia, a couple hits. For the run. One down. And now here's Hardy. Another pitch up. But now Pelfrey gets the ball, the return throw from Domit. And as much as he has struggled with his control, the tempo is the same as it was Sunday in Cleveland. Pop up to short, hit right at Escobar. Two down, and I guess that's what I was interested to watch as much as anything else. I didn't expect I'd see 94, 95 on the radar gun, but Rick Anderson has been imploring Pelfrey to pitch with a, a, a greater, quicker pace, and he's done that. Even even though he's had a hard time with his control, at least the pace is the same. Yeah, pace is the same. Same. He's a little up. He's a lot of fly ball outs. Eight fly ball outs so far, and only two ground ball outs to go with a strikeout. In the Cleveland game, he pitched six innings, had three one, two, three innings. In two other innings, he only faced four batters. So there was all the reason in the world then in that game to pitch with a quicker pace. But now here, he struggled almost from the outset, but he's still moving things along. Yeah, yeah. And you know what, Dick? Uh, we, you talked about the defense of the Twins, how well they have been playing. You know, they had what, 11 games in a row? They didn't make an error. They made one yesterday, but. You know, when you have a good defense behind you, as you're a pitcher, you want all these guys ready to play. You know, they, hopefully that ball's going to be hit to me. It's by the tempo of the pitcher. I think he just had a quick inning. There you go. Very good. Good job. Three up, three down quickly in the top of the fourth. the plate now in the bottom of the fourth and on our AT&T Twitter poll today we've been asking you what's your favorite fish name in baseball now in the Boston series Mike Carp came to the plate a couple of times yeah. and he didn't even make the cut. No, pretty good names up there Kevin Bass 
Mike Trout, Catfish Hunter. Strike one to Eduardo Escobar. So I, of course, encourage you to vote. Use the hashtag and vote for one of those four guys. But I was kind of hoping that Mike Carp was on there. Have you ever uh, eaten carp? Yes. Really? When uh, when I was a kid in Western Minnesota, they would. Uh, I'm not sure how they they kill them. Uh, I never asked, but they would smoke them. Smoke carp. And uh, we would eat it and uh, thought it was great. It was about the saltiest thing you could ever eat. But we would eat it and thought it was a delicacy. Really? One and two. And Escobar strikes out for the second time. One down. And Hamill picks up his fourth strikeout. You've never had smoked carp? No, I never have. Willie Stargell with the Pirates was one time telling Dale Barra how to cook up carp. He said, go to the plot, go to the lumber store, get a really nice piece of redwood, and then put the carp on it, put all the seasoning on, put it in the oven at 450, whatever it is, and then take it out, throw the carp away, and eat the redwood. <laughs> yeah, that was the best way to That's eat carp. That's about right. I'm not a gardener, but I understand they make great garden fertilizer. <laughs> Dig a hole, bury him, and well, it'll grow more carp. I don't know. Here's Carroll, single and a strikeout so far. Hey, everybody, be safe in the fishing opener, and if you're yes. in the fortunate uh, part of the state that doesn't have ice on the lakes yet, if you found open water tomorrow, good luck. Season opens tonight in what about three and a half hours. Yeah, have fun, everybody. Catch the big one. Carroll strikes out, and Weeders flips to first. Two quick outs here in the Twins. Hamill picks up strikeout number five. Carroll for the second time. You know, sometimes as a pitcher, we talked about Hamill coming in 5 and 0, 3.41 ERA and five road games. All his wins have come on the road. You're not going to have your best stuff every time out. And so far, a lot of pitchers thrown 68 pitches, but he's hanging in there. Five strikeouts. Twins have been able to put a, a board on, you know, run on the board first four and in, three innings. Seven hits for the Twins, two of them by Joe Maurer. Ball one. Maurer with a double over the reach of Chris Dickerson and right in the first, and then with the bases loaded and two out. Looked like Hamill was going to wriggle out of a mess. Mauer grounded a two run single up the middle to take the score from one nothing to three yeah, nothing. That was a big hit for Joe Mauer and the Twins. Two and oh. And a strike. I comment in Boston, you look at that bat of Joe's, and it's the same one that looks like the same one anyway he's been using it. For the last uh, week or so, but some guys break a lot of bats. We've seen some shattered bats in this game, but a hitter like Joe, that just about you know, when he makes contact, puts it on the barrel of the bat. They don't go through too many bats. That one looks like it's been used for about two weeks. Three and two. I'll have to check with Joe about that yeah. particular bat. Yeah, that that would be a good question. I remember going into the Hall of Fame into the into the vault and seeing uh, Babe Ruth's bat. Where actually there were notches in it. How many home runs he hit? Oh, was that right? Yeah, uh, he must have hit that. He was a bat almost all season long. You could have done that with your gloves. Well, I used. You know what? I can be honest because I came up before the designated hitter in 1970, right. and then I had to hit again when I went to the Pittsburgh Pirates. I used the same bat for six seasons. Oh, is that right? Yeah, and there wasn't even a mark on it. I still have it at home. It's could have awesome. Could have taken a canoe paddle up there. Wouldn't have made any difference, right? What a, a canoe paddle's a little bit wider. I might have more of a chance. <laughs> Maurer swings and misses. A really good inning for Jason Hamill. He strikes out Escobar, Carroll, and Maurer.
As we head into the fifth inning, I'm Jamie Hirsch in the Minnesota Lottery Winner's Circle with a big group from uh, just outside the Duluth area. We've got Ken and Debbie Johnson. They have a circle as Bert sign that says, hey, it's on our bucket list. So my question to you now is, if you got this checked off, what's next? Well, I just want to be on the kiss cam, but he wants the twins to go to the World Series. And then you'll go to the game. That'll be on the bucket. Okay. Okay, great. Well, we've got this one checked off the list. And to go along with that, we've got $100 worth of scratch-off tickets from the Minnesota Lottery. So congratulations and thanks for being here tonight. Thank you. Great game. Great night. Dick and Bert. Very nice. And Morno can't dig out Blue's low throw. Casilla will likely get his second infield hit. Little number in front of Plouffe. He barehanded it and threw low. And it is a leadoff hit for Casilla, who's picked up a couple of hits on the left side of the plate. Well, Plouffe was already playing in on the grass for the possible bunt right there, and he comes in, makes a nice play, but uh, you know, just couldn't get to Justin in the air at short hop, Justin. But Casilla will get an infield base hit, his second hit of the ball game. McLeod. With a ground ball to second and the strikeout. Casilla stole second after his third inning single. Now some of the hits here against uh, Pelfrey have been uh, scratch hits to say the least. Jones hit the ball with the handle of his bat and rolled it in front of Plouffe. Strike one. Now Casilla's hit. One strike to Nate McLeod. And up high, one and one. Pelfrey had 67 pitches, 39 for strikes. One walk, one strikeout. And Casilla in the third inning stole second base. Orioles had the bases loaded two out. But then Pelfrey got a big fly ball out off the bat of Chris Davis with the Twins lead on the line. And Pelfrey lets it go wisely and it starts a double play. Pitchers, athletic or not, Tend to want to try to reach for everything they can get. There are some times when you see balls hit like this that you know where they're going. They're not hit sharply, so let it go. You see what Peltry did right there, kind of backed away. He knew somebody was going to be right around second base, and it was Escobar. Step on the bag, quick flip over to first, a big double play. So two down, base is empty for Machado. Sounded like another crack bat. I think that's, the, that's a good strike right there. That might be the best pitch I've seen Pelfrey throw as far as get strike one. Good fastball down. Good delivery. One and one. The pitch to contact approach has been maligned in these parts for the last couple of years again because the contact was too solid. There are a lot of ugly innings and ugly games because of it. But this works. Belfry's broken some bats, a few scratch hits. And you mentioned earlier, Dick, the tempo, yeah. picking up the tempo, too. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good pitch right there. Just maybe a little low. Three and one to Machado with Marquinhos on deck. Bruce Dreckman behind the plate. Or foul. Well, I know up. there's two outs, yeah. but with you know talking about umpires, Bruce Dreckman, uh, you know we saw that incident. A lot of people, I'm sure, in Houston, were, you know, the pitching change was allowed without a uh, reliever coming in and not even facing a hitter. So, and then Thielen Colbert today got suspended for uh, two games. The rest the, of the uh, umpire and crew fine. Right. We're not knowing the rule. Foul. Oh my! Machado fouled it hard off that front leg. 
But you know, as we were discussing before the game, that's a rule I knew when I was eight years old. Right. You know, if you're playing, for me it was Stratomatic, a board game or any game, you bring a pitcher in. They've got to face at least one batter, and it's unless there's an injury. Right, that right. You can see Machado's going Ouch. to be borrowing uh, Andrew jo or Adam Jones's uh, shin guard next time up. Boy, that's got to hurt. Yeah, I, I don't. Uh, and you know, of course, Mike Sosha went and, and you know protested the game, which he had the right to. As I said on Twitter, I don't know what I was more offended by that a manager a major league manager and his bench coach didn't know the rules or that an entire umpiring crew didn't know the rules. I just find that uh, incomprehensible. Well Machado's going to try to stay in the game here with two outs. And Pelfrey getting an attaboy from Ryan Doman. <laughs> That has to hurt. Well, you got Machado, whose left foot is barking. Jones had his foot x-rayed over something similar yesterday. Full count. Those sinking fastballs will do that. The hitters think they're right on it, and then they, you know, when they make contact, boy, they hit the bottom of the bat right into their shin area or ankle area. Aaron Masterani still on the disabled list because yeah, of that's that. right. Then he nearly did it again. And what do you do as a pitcher? <laughs> you go back with that sinker down and in. Machado making the jump from double A. Of course, the Twins have two outfielders who are. One of them is trying to do that, and Arcia, for all intents and purposes, is trying to do that. Arcia. Left double A last year, played a handful of games for Rochester, and now he's having an impact at the big league level. Scalded to Bluff. That'll break in a glove. Three men come to the plate in a scoreless fifth inning. Twins up for nothing. This copyrighted telecast presented by the authority of the Minnesota Twins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Minnesota Twins. Josh Willingham leading off the Twins fifth inning. Both pitchers 
had some difficulty early for Hamill. That's nothing new. He is one of those guys. It's only going to miss two strikes. He's had a couple first inning get away from him this year where he gave up three runs. And you hear uh, just one run in the first, but then two in the second, another in the third. But he struck out the side in the fourth. He jumps ahead of Willingham quickly, 0 and 2. You see that a lot, Dick, from, you know, starting pitchers. You know, you have to get them early until they settle in. And then Hamill seems, you know, he struck out the side, as you mentioned, there he, he gets Willingham. A crazy bone, it must be, because it was a a breaking pitch, not thrown very hard, but it, the way he reacted, it must have gotten Willingham right in the back of that left elbow. Willingham, uh, you know, it's the fifth time he's been hit this year. He kind of puts a smile on his face right there. That ball, that breaking ball that ends up hitting the back pocket or to hit his arm. Let's yeah. take a look right here. Oh, he kind of, yeah, back of the elbow area. The thing you do when you bang your elbow against a chair and you don't want to live for about seven seconds. <laughs> What just happened to Willingham? Yeah, they call it the funny bone. There's nothing funny about that. Here's Morno. Up and away, ball one. Morno with uh, a strikeout, called out on strikes in the first, then a leadoff double in the third. He hooked one into the right field corner. Two and oh. It's about time for Justin to take one deep right here. Well, you're feeling pretty pretty uh, yeah. assertive over there. Yeah. Miss uh, how much you were gone, what, three weeks, four weeks? Uh, about a month, yeah. yeah. Justin, uh, his last home run coming on April 28th against Texas here. Let's see if he uh, gets the green light three and oh. Both Justin's home runs have been hit here at Target Field. Hamill has allowed six home runs on the year. And four pitch one. So smooth sailing through the fourth. Hamill strikes out three guys, but he hits a guy, walks a guy, and now he's got to face Bluth. Celebrating with the Twins, the 20th anniversary of the Sandlot with a special screening on the Target Field scoreboard May 19th after the Twins game. Special guests included the director and narrator David Mickey Evans, plus Squints and Ham from the cast. Get your tickets, go to the game, stay for the Sandlot screening Sunday the 19th of May, and if you can't make it to the game, watch it all from home on Fox Sports North. Here's Plouffe, a fly ball to right and a ground ball to short. Blocked by Weeders, ball one. Activity now in the Baltimore bullpen. For the Orioles, it's T.J. McFarland warming up. Swing and a foul. One and one. Orioles have three left handed relievers. Hamill, I'll take a look right there at uh, TJ McFarland warming up. Hamill's shortest outing five innings, two starts ago in Seattle. He ended up picking up the win, but he threw 102 pitches in the five innings. One and one to Plouffe. Two and one. Really fun to watch this baseball team and this lineup right now because they're more patient at the plate. They're getting good pitches to hit and they're creaming them. That's a pitch, that 1 1 pitch Plouffe might have offered at it a couple of weeks ago. And now a drive to the left field corner. McLeod won't get it. It one hops the fence. Rounding third, Willingham comes in. It's an RBI double for Trevor Plouffe. That might have been set up by taking the 1 1 pitch. Rather than swinging at it, grounding into a double play. Yeah, that's that patience you were talking about. And then the breaking ball looked like Hamill left it up right there. Bluth gave it a ride into that left field uh, area for a double. An RBI double is 12th 12 RBI of the year. Elfrey saying, keep adding on, boys. Yeah, that breaking looked like a little cutter almost. Inner half of the plate. 
Ruth turned, opened up quickly. A line drive double. That scores Willingham. And the Twins take a 5 nothing lead. Buck Showalter seen enough. Hamill excused after going four innings plus five runs on the board. A couple of guys in scoring position. And Ryan Doman will hit against T.J. McFarland when we come back. Add to it here. Here's the pitch that Plouffe took with a 1 1 count. I mean, it's a fastball down and good take right there by Plouffe. And you're right, sometimes you know you want to stay aggressive, but you want to wait for this pitch right there. Look at how quick he got the barrel of the bat out. And that's that RBI double by Trevor Plouffe. Good at bat. TJ McFarland will pitch and make Doma hit from the right side of the plate. That's the type of sequence, though, we saw an awful lot in Boston where. You know, twin hitters were just generally more patient, and if if a pitch wasn't exactly what they wanted, because everybody else in the lineup was hitting doubles, you didn't feel like you needed to hit a double, and then you ended up hitting a double anyway. It's just relaxing yep. and, and not depending on yourself. Have other guys pick you up too. Doman swings and misses one strike. Good sinking fastball by McFarland right there. Only 23 years old in his rookie season at the major league level for the Orioles. He's a rule five pickup by the Orioles over the winter from the Indian organization. Popped up right field, short right field. Morno setting up for a tag. And a good bluff forcing the throw one away. Let's check in with Jamie Hirsch. Well, thank you, Dick. As Oswaldo Arcia steps up to the plate here, three things you need to know about this guy. He's the first player to hit a triple and a home run on his birthday since Niger Morgan did it with the Brewers back in 2011. Now, he's also earned a new nickname, the Pony, or Caballito in Spanish. They tell me it's because power hitters like Mauer or Morno are often called horses, and Arcia is a young horse. Third thing, his walk-up music is new today. It's his favorite song, Limbo, by Daddy Yankee. There you go, guys. You learned something new every day. All right. Thank you, Jamie. Let's see what Pony can do right here. A dribbler. That's going to be trouble. He's going to get a run in. Yep. Morno breaking from third. Kloof moving to third base. And RC is retired for the first time, but he's just driven in his 12th run. Kind of a swinging bunt, and really as a pitcher, you have to, you know, go follow the ball like McFarland did and get the out at first. No chance to make a play at home plate. So Justin scores for the second time in a ball game. And it's a six nothing twins lead. Here's Aaron Hicks. Blue for third two away. Twins didn't score in the fourth but they've come back. With at least a deuce here in the fifth. Ball one. With a single in the second. Hitting the ball sharply on the ground up the middle. 
2 and 0. Twins fans have responded to the good play on the road. We got a nice crowd here tonight. Expect another nice crowd tomorrow. Mother's Day should be a nice crowd here Sunday yes. afternoon. On the ground is short. Hardy has it. And that ends the inning. But hit batter and a walk set up a two run fifth. In every inning but one so far. Freeze Cam brought to you by Frost Brew Coors Light. Right, this is Adam Jones right here getting <laughs> jammed. Oh, oh, End up getting a base hit when the barrel of the bat went into short left field. Look at that ball hitting foul territory and then rolled into fair territory. Found the grass and stayed on that grass. That's called getting in the kitchen. Nick Marcakis. In the refrigerator. Deep. Will face Mike Pelfrey. Pelfrey's had a hard time delivering first pitch strikes at his 77th pitch of the night, but now he's got a six nothing lead. And there's the outside corner one and one. And another called strike. Good fastball down and away there after that big slow curveball. This will be pitch number 80 for Mike Pelfrey. Passed a diving clue, and Marcakis has a leadoff extra base hit. Kankus is aboard with a, an opening double here in the sixth. Good piece of hitting right there by Mark Kankus. He's such a good hitter, career 300 yeah, hitter. That ball got deep into the strike zone. And then at the last second, watch this fastball right here. Just kind of takes that fastball down that third baseline. Ploof playing off the line. And the ball hits just past his glove into the corner. Adam Jones will hit a fly ball to center and a single for the cleanup hitter for the Orioles. Strike on the outside corner. Well, when they say get deep into the strike zone, means that ball is right about here. Over the plate. Yep, over the plate, and then uh, you know he's pretty much. Marcakis, very good major league hitter. You see Joe Bauer do that a lot. Mm -hmm. Hit the ball when it's right over the plate. Missing inside one and one. A 
Go. Orioles averaging about a hit per inning against Pelfrey. They got two hits in the third but didn't score. And then he came back with a one, two, three, fourth. Chopper left side and again no place for Markakis to go. Another leadoff double. It's the third time already where the Orioles have had a man at second, nobody out, and have failed to advance that runner to third. Right, right. Sort of wild now head into a busy offseason after last night's loss. Read Brian Hall's season analysis and look ahead to next year at FoxSportsNorth.com. I guarantee you the Orioles, who have 21 wins, 14 losses coming into this ballgame, they have not done that too often like they're doing tonight. Usually a good ball club like the Orioles, you know, Buck Walter, good manager. You want to do little things to help your club get back into a ball game, and the Orioles have not been very successful, like you mentioned, Dick, getting that leadoff guy at second base over the third. Davis started the second inning with a double, and then Pelfrey went to work. He got Weeders, Hardy, and Dickerson, and Davis never left second base. Sales outside 2 and 0. Pelfrey's longest outing, his last when he went six innings. He has picked up three wins with starts of five and a third innings, five innings, and then the six inning win against Cleveland. Quinn's bullpen might be in a little bit of rough shape. Glenn Perkins has gone the last couple of nights. Twins would like to give him a day off. Well, it's so important if a pitcher can get through an inning. That way you don't have to have somebody get up and get yeah. loose. And Pelfrey right now 86 pitches. In his last start in Cleveland, he ended up throwing 92 pitches in the six innings. Foul away. Remember years ago, when the Twins had uh, Carlos Silva, Rick Reed, Radke, that bunch. They had to have led the league in fewest inherited runners because it seemed like a lot of those guys, it was six or seven complete innings, and then you turned it over to the bullpen. Pop-up headed for the seats again. You can see the velocity still there, 92 mile an hour. Tried to put a little extra on there, and Pelfrey a little upset. He thought maybe he'd get that ball by Davis, but Davis fouled it off. Pelfrey with one strikeout in the ball game, one walk, allowed six hits. Couple extra base hits. Two and two to Davis. And off speed pitch misses. Two pitch. High fly to right. Arcia back. Off the wall. Looked like he got there. Yeah. And a run will score with Davis checking in at second base. Yeah, it looked like a ball that Arcia should have gotten to the wall a little bit quicker and then went straight up. Kind of let the ball play him. I think he thought that ball was going to go a little bit deeper, but looked like he got back there. Look at this high fly ball. Arcia goes back, and right here he slows down a little bit rather than running to the wall. And that's a ball that probably should have been caught if he went to the spot on that wall and then just leaped up. He slowed down a little bit right off the tip of his glove. Ends up being an RBI double for Davis. And it's a six to one ball game.
Here's Matt Weeders, a liner to left and a fly ball to center. So the Orioles move Marquecas from second base, bring him in. Here's a ball fouled back, but they needed some help to do it. Now you're taught as an outfielder to run to that spot where you think that ball's going to come down rather than what we saw or see a do is slow down and then try to play it off that wall or near the wall. Get to the wall and then make the adjustment. I saw Aaron Hicks do something similar in left center field. He took off for the ball. It was a catchable ball and then leaped for it a step or two before he really needed to in front of the wall. Oh, it's not that easy. I mean, we you know we can show it back on replay, and it looks like you know, hey, he should have been there. But it's tough when you're out there running back, you're you're bouncing around, and you're trying to find out exactly where that wall is. Oh, Willingham with a catch, firing to second base, just barely getting back is Davis. Willingham almost getting an outfield assist because that ball was hit sharply off the back of that of Weeders. Second time that Weeders has hit a ball sharply, but right at Willingham. And Davis got a little out, out too far. But able to get back. That little short hop right there. He's out. Yeah, never got his left foot on the bag. I think Willingham in communicating with Hicks pointed up toward the lights. You may have seen at the last instant of a low line drive that ball might have disappeared and the lights on. Two down. And Hardy takes ball one. No activity in the Twins bullpen with Pelfrey still riding a five run lead. The Twins would love to get him through six, but now the pitch counts up to 94. Season high 96 pitches for Pelfrey back in the middle of April. One and one. Story goes Pelfrey after his six innings in Cleveland wanted to go out for the seventh and they said no that's enough and that Pelfrey wanted to go another inning which of course is what you want to hear if you're the pitching coach you or the man you want to hear it but then you also have to remember back on May 1st or May 2nd of last year Pelfrey had that Tommy John surgery so you know it's it's they're going to kind of kind of baby him and see how he does a lot of fly ball outs. Two and one, trying to wrap up at least six innings here. Drill to left center. Willingham won't get it. It's another extra base hit. And Hardy cracking a double to the gap. It's six to two. Yeah, third double of this inning. Marcakis led off with a double down the left field line. Davis, that one that probably should have been caught, an RBI double. And here Hardy, J.J. Hardy got a fastball up, and he didn't miss it. He had it sharply into left center. Out number two was hit well. The line drive by Weeders, and now Dickerson will hit after a trip to the mound by Rick Anderson. Well, this uh, trip right here, you can see that ball go right back into that swing of J.J. Hardy. His fifth double of the year. Rick Anderson uh, is going to take a little time, I think, as seems to be some stirring in the bullpen for the Twins. Dickerson, the eighth place hitter, Casilla, the ninth place hitter. Yankees have opened up a five run lead over the Royals. It's 10 5 in Kansas City, but still on the sixth inning there. I saw what Rick Anderson did right there. He made uh, Bruce Dreckman come out and gives uh, Joshua Renicky, who's up right now, you know, time to get up, make some throws in case he's needed. Dickerson with a pop to short and a ground ball to Mordo. Strike on the outside corner. Yeah. 
And now one and one. Season high 99 pitches for Pelfrey. He was moving along through five just fine and some very well hit balls here in the sixth inning. Well, again, too many pitches in a short amount of time. Swing and a miss. One of the few swings and misses we've seen. One and two. At 24 pitches so far here in the sixth inning, 23 in the first. Other than that, the fourth and fifth, I thought, okay, he's back into a good groove. 21 pitches for those six outs, but here in the sixth, too many pitches. To left center. And that one will settle into the gap for another extra base hit. Fourth extra base hit of the inning, and it's six to three. Belfry unable to perhaps finish six innings when he was so close to doing it, but the Orioles doing to the Twins what the Twins did to the Red Sox. They're doubling them to death. Yeah, four doubles this inning. Three runs scored by the Orioles for Dickerson, his second double of the year, driving in his third run. A sudden three spot, and now Casillo's got a couple of hits. Came into the game just one for nine as a left handed batter. He's got two hits. Although the last one was just a little roller up the third baseline. A little swinging butt. Tries to bunt. Uh, not a bad decision right there by Casilla because Trevor Plouffe was playing way back. And he saw that. And if I could lay that ball down on the grass right there, I'm going to get an infield base hit. That brings Plouffe in a little bit. Now even with the bag. One strike to Casilla. Strike two. There was some thought that Casilla, even in tonight's game, might scrap switch hitting and give up hitting from the left side entirely, but he's got a couple of hits now. He's always uh, the twin staff considered to be a much better right handed batter than left. Seven seasons with the Twins. He hit 250 as a switch hitter. Two strikes. Better as a right handed hitter. On the ground. Escobar puts an end to it. Three runs for the Orioles and a 6 3 score after five and a half. Ball on Fox Sports North is presented by McDonald's. Right now, you can get 20 crispy chicken McNuggets for just $4.99 at McDonald's. And by Toyota. Let's go places. To find the nearest Toyota dealer and check out our current offers, visit buyatoyota.com. 
Orioles cut the Twins lead in half tomorrow. Sprint Cup Series racing returns to Fox and goes back under the lights. As Daytona 500 champion and points leader Jimmy Johnson will look to defend his title and claim his fourth career victory at the Darlington Raceway. Fox Sports exclusive coverage of Sprint Cup Series racing begins tomorrow at 5 p.m. Central. One strike to Escobar who struck out twice tonight against Jason Hamill. Now a tapper to short. Hardy has an easy play. One down. John Lester pitched a one hit shutout for the Red Sox tonight. They beat Toronto five to nothing. And the Toronto Blue Jays are now 13 and 24. Who would have thought, huh? Coming into the uh, season, everybody expecting the Toronto Blue Jays to be that team to beat in the Eastern Division. And a lot of teams are beating them. Yes. <laughs> Jamie Carroll will hit single and a couple of strikeouts. He squares to bunt. I don't takes think the they strike. meant it that. They way didn't mean though. it that way. <laughs> Detroit has beaten Cleveland ten to four. Twins would love to answer with one, something they did a good job of on the weekend, or uh, excuse me, on the road trip, at least in their wins. Lifted foul into the seats. Another guy scored. He came back at least. Got one back in the next half inning. Another sign of a team that's playing good baseball. Here tonight, the Twins have scored in every inning but the fourth. When Hamill struck out the side, including Carroll, for the second strikeout of the inning. One and two. T.J. McFarland, just 23 years old, making his eighth major league appearance, all out of relief. Had a good year last year in the Indian organization between Double A and Triple A. He won 16 ball games as a starter, but now in the bullpen for the Orioles. Very good bullpen. Driven to center, and Jones backpedals, makes the catch, two away. That's one thing, Dick. Both these bullpens, very, very solid. Take a look around the league. There's John Lester's one hit shutout at a perfect game for five innings. And Desmond with a big game for the Nationals. Seems like every night Miguel Cabrera is doing something to lead the Tigers to a win. Max Scherzer with the win for the Tigers over the Indians at Comerica Park. Bauer takes a ball. Cabrera came into today's play hitting at 382 and also that's leading the American League in hitting and also uh, driving in 37 runs, which is the most in the American League. Looking at maybe for another triple crown. Anybody ever have triple crowns back to back years? Back to back years. Williams did it twice. And uh, quite a play. Yeah. One and one. Two and one. Mauer with a double, a single, and a strikeout. McFarland has come in and retired all five batters he's been asked to get so far. Three ground balls and a couple of fly balls. This one hit to left center. It's got some carry. Jones and McLeod chase it. That ball hits the warning track and then hits Jones. Mauer has another double. A three hit night for Joe Maurer now with 13 doubles on the year. Like a breaking ball that stayed up. And Joe, as he does so well, taking that ball, as you can see, deep into that zone. And then that uppercut swing hits that ball toward the bullpen area, a long way here at Target Field for a double. Willingham will be walked and Bordo will come up. So Willingham struggling. He's uh, after this intentional walk. 0 for 2 with an RBI and a ground ball. He's been hit by a pitch and now will be intentionally walked. A 
And as Warno's batting average has climbed from the 230s through the 250s and now into the 270s, he has been much more competitive against left handed pitching. Coming into the game hitting at 250 against lefties. Now he's not hit a home run against a lefty. But as he's come back from his assorted injuries, it's been the one part of his game that has kind of lagged behind his MVP caliber seasons. And we'll see how he fares here with the Twins mounting a threat with two gone on the sixth. Fastball and a strike taken. To Ron Comer, and he could kind of relate to it because of any hitter who is going to be up here is going to go through periods when you struggle. It said it just seemed to me that like Justin was in a hurry to get his at bat over with sometimes, and we've seen more patience from him too. Well, Liner up the middle, Hardy playing him well, and Morno hits it hard for the third out. They couldn't have hit it any harder right there. 6 3 twins as we go to the seventh. Up by three. Oh, uh, the Twins scored early. You take a look at Trevor Proof right there, an RBI double. That scored Josh Willingham. The Twins took a six nothing lead. Garcia picking up an RBI as Justin scores. But the Orioles, like they have so many times this year, they fight back. Well, oh, they probably should have been caught right here. Four doubles in that three run sixth inning off of Mike Kelfrey makes it a six to three game. Kelfrey, what they call a quality start. He goes six innings, nine hits, three runs, all earned with a walk and a strikeout. He's the pitcher of record. And now the bullpen takes over. Josh Renicki, the first one out, making his 12th relief appearance. He last worked on Tuesday. Gave up uh, one run in that six to one win, the home run to Salta Lamakia. But the Twins won that ball game six to one. Twins were able to get through that game using just two pitchers, and that set up for uh, the next two games of the series for what was to follow. It was a big lift for the Twins to get through that game. There's a strike. One and one. Now, Renicki, also from the Colorado Rockies, earlier we were talking about Jason Hamill getting out of Coors Field and the Orioles hope prospering away from there. Jeremy Guthrie doing better. For the Royals than he ever did for the Rockies the short time he was there. Now here's a drive to right center field. And the seventh inning is going to start with an extra base hit. McLeod with a leadoff double, the fifth double for the Orioles in the last eight plate appearances. And suddenly there's a sense of uneasiness here as the Orioles 
Who scored uh, three runs on five doubles so far in the last inning and some change. Yeah, I mean, uh, they have ten hits and six doubles in this ball game. The ball left up. McLeod picks up his first hit on his ninth double. Orioles out hitting the Twins. And Machado one for three. Solid single to center, a bouncer to third, and a liner to third. Up high, ball one. Yeah, you were talking about Redicky, Dick. About I mean, he had good success yeah. in Colorado. As a reliever last year, 63 relief appearances. Very good, 3.25 ERA. Shadow bluffs a bunt, takes ball two. Renicky pitching toward the middle of this Baltimore batting order here. Shadow, then Marquecas, Jones, Davis. There is the bunt. Blue bare hands it and throws it wildly. 6 4 ball to him. Marcinkus, or excuse me, Machado will hold up at second. Ploof had no chance of recording an out. And then the throw is up the baseline. Yeah, and that'll be ruled an infield base hit, and then the error by Ploof. Ploof picking up his third error of the year. But again, look where he's Calvin's playing. It's playing not back, and you know, Casilla tried to do it last inning with Ploof playing back. And right there, Trevor Ploof. I don't think he got a good grip on that ball as it uh, hits the wall and then rolls toward right field. Nobody out. Tying run at the plate now. Markakis started the Oriole comeback that's still a couple runs short, but it's 6 4 now. It was Markakis cracking a double down the left field line to begin the sixth inning. Up high, ball one. Renicky kind of picking up where Pelfrey left off, falling behind hitters. Kank has had a great year last year against the Twins, and he's continuing to pick up some hits, a double his last time up. Strike one and one. Markakis in his eighth season with the Orioles. Career 296 hitter coming into this year. Had some injuries last year. They, this is one guy they need to keep healthy. Two and one. Renicky's been very good, especially against left handed batters, holding him to a sub 200 batting average coming into play today. McClough, a lefty, started the inning with a double, and now Marcakis with a 2 1 count. That's to the gap on the left side. Willingham into a slide makes a nice play to hold Marcakis to a single, but it's a 6 5 ball game. Marcakis picking up his 16th RBI on his second hit of the ball game. Machado scores. The Orioles waking up. They got to town about the same time the Twins did in the neighborhood 2 3 in the morning. Nothing through five innings, but now that, I mean, that pitch by Renicky looked like it was down and away. I'm not sure if it's a bad pitch. Yeah, Casey Fiend getting up. Great play by Willingham right there with that slide and keeping Marcakis at first base. Still double play in order. Twins need an out. Adam Jones, the batter. Oh, foul. Oh, boy, just barely foul. That ball got down in a hurry. Didn't have that. Much time to hook. Well, that change up left up right there. Jones gave it a ride down that left field line. Renicky making his second appearance this year against the Orioles. He picked up his only win on the year against the Orioles. Rick Anderson, the pitching coach, out to talk to uh, Josh. But he pitched three innings of shutout baseball against the Orioles in Baltimore. Twins won that game six to five. A lot was made of that, of course. Josh's dad, Gary. 
played most of his career with the Baltimore Orioles. Josh spent some time early in his life in Baltimore. Yeah, he was, he was uh, born in Baltimore, actually. That's as early as you can get. Yeah. Four doubles in the sixth, and now three hits and a Twins error in the seventh. Still nobody out, and it's a one run game. Orioles had a lot of games like this last year, coming from behind late in ball games. That's what I was talking about earlier. Games with five or more runs. 21 times now the Orioles have been able to put five or more runs up on the board. Missing inside one and one. Ball called a strike. That's one thing the Twins have noticed from Renicky you know, a better, sharper breaking ball than what they expected. And again, the lower altitude might have something to do with that, with Renicky pitching in the thin air during his home games. Needs a really good pitch here. Don't foul down That's, the right field line. That was a pretty good pitch right there that Jones just fouled off. A good sinker down and in. Thirty plate appearances for the Orioles. Twins pitchers have one strikeout. They could use one here. Got a ground ball double play. Just saving that for Davis. <laughs> Jam shot and a roller. Plouffe charges. Just barely gets Jones one away, but now the tying run moves into scoring position. Let's not forget about Willingham's play, though, because if. Markakis had gotten a double like it looked like he was going to get. Now Plouffe has to charge that ball and the tying run is 90 feet away. Right. One down and here's Davis. And if Markakis was at second base, he advances right there because that Plouffe had to come running in to get that jam shot right there off the bat of Adam Jones. Davis with a pair of doubles. It was his double that Arcia retreated on and should have made the catch at the fence in right center field. Now easier said than done, but that ball had a lot of hang time too. That ball was way up there. A couple of off-speed pitches left up high. Pretty good hitter in Matt Weeters, but maybe not as dangerous a hitter with Weeters hitting behind Davis. Now you want to be very careful here, Davis, with 10 home runs on the year. There's a breaking pitch over. So a lot of off speed stuff here to Davis. He took two for balls and now takes one for a strike. Dozen hits for the Orioles. Seven of them. And the last inning and a third. Now swing and a miss, two and two. Good fastball down right there by Renicky. Straight over the top. Two and two. Deep to right. And Arcia about where the last ball was hit. This one's off the wall. It's going to tie the game. Davis to second, and it's six to six. Davis with his third double of the ball game and another extra base hit for the Orioles. That 
That was a hanger right there. And Davis did not miss it. So Renicky with a disappointing outing, giving up four hits to the five men he faces. And Davis nearly poked one out to give the Orioles the lead. As it is, they've completed the comeback and tied the game now at six. To the Orioles. MLB.com at bat is the number one source for live baseball everywhere you go. Available for iPhone, iPad, Android, and Blackberry 10. At bat delivers Twins baseball with live audio, pitch tracking, stats, news, highlights, and more. Text at bat to 31826 or visit twinsbaseball.com for details. Mike Pelfrey won't get a win tonight. Casey Fien needs to get a couple of outs here in the seventh to keep this a tie game. And I know in the visiting clubhouse there's Jason Hamill spitting out that hook that was way down by the throat area. So he will get a no decision. Casey Fien coming in for the 16th time on the year. He last worked on Wednesday at Fenway Park, one inning in the 15 to 8 Twins win over the Red Sox. Go ahead, run it second, one away. Weeders is 0 for 3, but he's hit two lineouts to left fielder Josh Willingham. A slider over for strike one. Yeah, that outing by Josh uh, Josh Renicky. That's so. That's the worst we've seen him throw so far. So just a bad day for Renicky. Both these I mentioned earlier. Both these teams have very good bullpens. Twins came in with a 2.63 ERA. Only the Indians had a lower combined earned run average, and the Orioles are just behind the Twins with a 2.8 earned run average as a bullpen. And it all happened in a hurry here. Eight of the last 11 Baltimore plate appearances have resulted in hits. Tommy Hunter warming up for the Orioles. One and one to Matt Weeders. And behind him, J.J. Hardy. A high fly to center. Hicks retreating. Making the catch. Here's the throw to third base. It's a strong one, but not quite in time. Boy, Hicks let it air out from the warning track. It's a... Deep fly, deep enough to get Davis up to third base. Yeah, you know what? That is an outstanding defensive play by Aaron Hicks. What? Look at him get behind the ball, and then show off that good arm that he has. A two hopper to prove, but Davis able to slide in safely. Got behind the throw and uh, delivered it on target. So two down, and now J.J. Hardy. Go ahead, run at third with two away. And another first pitch slider for a called strike.
One for three tonight. An RBI double last inning. It's down the line, foul, two strikes. And who hasn't had an RBI <laughs> double for the uh, Orioles here tonight? It's kind of like how the Twins game at Fenway Park the other night was. Just you got tired of hit flicking the double off the fence and left. Just pull it into the corner and right. <laughs> Thirteen hits for the Orioles, seven doubles. Three by Davis. Big pitch here, big at bat. The Twins have spit up a six nothing lead. Chopper to short. Escobar ends the inning. Three in the sixth for Baltimore, and three more in the seventh. Any group together and head down to Target Field. Organize your business, church, school, or maybe a group a dozen of your neighbors and friends if you have that many and make a game of it. Visit twinsbaseball.groups or call 833 Twins and get a great deal of group tickets today. Now, Trevor Plouffe now will lead off the bottom of the seventh. A tie game. Twins have three innings worth of at bats. Orioles presumably have two. And Plouffe will try to get something started here. It'll be followed by Domit and Arcia. And where the uh, Orioles feasted on the Twins bullpen, specifically Josh Renicky. Twins haven't done anything against the Orioles bullpen, specifically TJ McFarland. Yeah, just the RBI double by Joe Maurer last inning. Other than that, McFarland starting his third inning. And Plouffe bunts in front of Machado and will get a bunt yeah. single. You know what? It's almost like here, you take that. You guys are butting in front of uh, me all night long. I'll do it to you. Ploof gets an infield single on the butt. Picks up his second hit. Well, he popped it up, but the ball settled and never did come up out of the grass. And you can see Machado playing as deep as third base as Ploof was on Machado. That ball had a lot of spin on it right here, too. As that hits that grass, it just spun away from Machado. He had no play. So now Doman. We've... Uh, Talked over the last week or so about the Twins' resiliency, and we'll see uh, how they respond to giving up a six run lead here. That kicks away from Weeders, and Plouffe will go to second. So, just like that, the Twins get the go ahead run into scoring position, and we'll see whether Doma tries to do anything differently now with uh, a runner at second, nobody out. Yeah, a wild pitch right there, charged to McFarland. Farland, that's his first wild pitch of the year. One and out to Domit. And the pitch way outside. This is strike zone by more than a foot. Two and out. The 
Orioles last year surprised just about everybody in baseball by contending all year and then ended up going to the postseason. They shaved nearly a full run off the team ERA in one year. That's almost unheard of. And it's not the perfect stat to, you know, tell you how a team's pitching staff is doing, but when you take a a whole runoff, 0.99 off your team ERA, that tells you why they emerged as a contender last year. They pitched a lot better. 2 0. And now 3 0 with Arcia on deck. Well, you don't win as many one run ball games like the Orioles did if your staff right. doesn't keep, they don't keep you in the game. Twins came into the ball game with a team ERA of 4.03, which is the league average. Doman takes a strike three and one. Well, that's one thing you couldn't say over the last couple of years. <laughs> oh. No, no, no. Three and one to Domit. Ploof at second base. Three and two. It looked like that swing right there. Domit still trying to hit that ball to right field. Now it's a little harder with two strikes. Just hit it hard someplace. Yes. I hope you find a hole. Right on top of that plate as a right handed hitter. Game is tied, but again, there are a couple of times early in the game when the Orioles did not get the job done in situations like this. We'll see if Doma can get it done. And, and beyond that, whether that might be the difference in this game here tonight. Pounded foul. Waited as long as he could for that 82 mile per hour pitch. Looked like a little sinker down and away. Nobody had the beard when his season started, then he shaved it. Now it's back again. He shaved it when he was not swinging a bat very well. Old foul. But baseball players aren't superstitious. Nine game homestand. Three with the Orioles. Three with the White Sox and three with the Red Sox. Three and two to Ryan Domit. Yeah. Down the line, but it's going to turn right. Oh, good try right there. Not a cost him his bat. Sounded like he hit it right off the end of the bat. I guess the bat's okay. Garcia, the odd deck hitter. Full count to Ryan Domit. Pulled toward the hole. Machado picks it up. Chases Plouffe back to second base. One away. It's cold hard fact brought to you by Frost Brew Coors Light. And Garcia has reached base 13 consecutive games and twice here tonight. And Garcia with a dozen runs batted in and just 67 at bats. So a big spot for the rookie here against the left-hander. He didn't get a good swing against uh, the uh, pitcher McFarland his first time up, hitting a little number to the right of the mound. But he did pick up the RBI, the sixth run yeah. for the Twins with that at bat. One and zero. Oh. We'll see a six hit, sixteen at bats against lefties, a double. Swing a foul, one and one.
brought to the big leagues as a run producer and he has done that. Hit for average hit for power. One and one. Swing and a foul again one and two. Garcia last year the minor league player of the year in the twins organization he won the uh, Sherry Robertson award. Between single A and double A hit 320. 17 home runs drove in 98 runs. One and two to the rookie. Struck him out two down. And another rookie will try to get it done. Buck Showalter is going to make a change, though, getting McFarland out of the game. You can be a part of our broadcast. Vote for who you think is the Arby's value player of the game. Text value a space and the player's last name to 234 234. Let us know who you think had the most value in today's game, and we'll tell you the winner in the postgame show. Nice job by McFarland, although he is responsible for Ploof at second base. And Aaron Hicks will try to put the Twins back in front with his second hit of the night. But now they need a seventh inning hit from Aaron Hicks to get back into the lead. And Tommy Hunter will come in to try to get the final out of the inning for the Orioles. Yeah, good numbers for Tommy Hunter. He came up with the Rangers. I remember he came up as a starter. And now in his third season with the Orioles, he's in that bullpen and doing very well. 16 innings pitched, only 11 hits allowed. Three walks with 11 strikeouts. Hard throwing right hand. Hicks marginally better from the. Right side of the plate than the left. Obviously, not very good from either side of the plate. He's picked up a single, then a fly ball to left and a ground ball to short. Up and away, ball one. Side up around the hands, and it's two and zero. Oh. Saw the curveball, saw the slider from Hunter, along with that fastball in the low 90s. Hunter, 26 years old, already his seventh major league season. Once had a threat going in the sixth, couldn't get a big two-out hit. Now another threat here in the seventh. Three and zero. Oh, Escobar would bat next. Fastball missing at 94.
fastball right down the middle, three and one again at 96 miles per hour. Well, I remember in this situation in the second inning, he was had to count in his favor, three and one, and he got the base hit up the middle off of Jason uh, Hamill. Three and one to Aaron Hicks. Fouled back. Good swing right there. Just got underneath that high fastball. 95 miles per hour, right over the middle of the plate. Full count, Escobar on deck. Go ahead, run at second and two away. Lifted foul, it will reach the seats and the bat's still alive. Again, mid 90s. Coming right at Hicks with fastballs. Another 3 2 pitch. Breaking ball struck him out. So the Twins get a bunt single leap ploof at second on to the eighth. Tied at six. Reynolds makes seeing a game uh, at Target Field an extra special experience for clients, co workers, family, and friends. Most suites are spoken for during the season. They do remain available for the holiday week of July 1st through the 4th when the Twins host the Yankees. Starting at just over $3,300, Yankee Series suites accommodate from 16 to 50 guests, and that includes food and beverage. Out more by calling 612 375 7454 or visiting twinsbaseball.com slash groups. Always a fun time when the Yankees come in and they come in from what January 1st or excuse through me, the July 4th. 1st yeah. through the 4th. Yeah. Yeah. Chris Dickerson facing Casey Fiend who got a couple of big outs in the seventh inning, but now the eighth inning begins. It'll be Dickerson, Casilla, and McLeod. There's that first pitch slider, and again, it's over for a strike. Twins trying to get through this game without using any left handed relief pitching. Brian Dunsing's pitched the last couple of games. Glenn Perkins has pitched the last couple of games. Swing and a miss. So Josh Renicky's already have been used. Fiend might be out there for a while. Anthony Swarzak would be available. Two strikes to Dickerson. Yeah, you have Ryan Presley out there, but remember he won. He pitched four innings. Yeah. 
Got his first major league win on Wednesday night in that 15 to 8 game through 66 pitches. So I'd have to say he's probably unavailable tonight. You know, the uh, standard usually for long relief is three innings, and then the Twins like to give the guy at least two days off after that. And with that extra inning of work, you can imagine they'd rarely rather not use Presley at all. Right. Down and in, one and two. Dickerson hit a double in the six, but then who did? <laughs> this was a six nothing ball game and Mike Pelfrey had five shutout innings going but the Orioles hit four doubles against him scored three runs in the sixth four more hits three more runs in the seventh and now it's tied two and two the count to Dickerson. Tapper to Plouffe. Charging again, firing on the run. Just barely got him. A very close play. What is that? The fourth or fifth time in this ballgame that Trevor Plouffe had to come in and try to field the ball on the run and then make a throw. He picked up an error last inning. But here, the throw right on the mark. A bang, bang play. Dickerson hustling down that line. Safe. Wow. Twins get a break. One down in the eighth. Here's Alexi Casilla. Well, it's a play we've seen Trevor make enough. I would have thought that that play would be the toughest play for him to make as a converted shortstop, then second base, first base, and then learning to play third base. But that seems to be one of the plays he's best at. Well, if you're at home and you see Trevor Plouffe coming in four or five times in a game, you probably say, well, why doesn't he just play in a little bit more? Maybe some guys in the dugout wondering <laughs> that too sometimes. Well, here he's in on the grass because who's up? You know, some of these are swinging bunts, and it, it's hard. Right. You know, you cut down your range if you're basically where Trevor Plouffe is playing. He would like to be behind the bag to... Give him more range left and right on a ground ball. Late innings tie game. You don't want to give up a double down the line. Right. Three and one now to Casilla. Fiend certainly doesn't want to walk Casilla. Clouth on deck. And he walked him. So Casilla and his base stealing ability is at first with one out and McLeod the batter. It is the second walk taken by the Orioles. But that one's a tough one with one out in the eighth inning. And that's one thing the Twins staff has done a great job of not allowing a lot of base on balls. McLeod. Doubled leading off the seventh inning. Twins are playing their 32nd game, and that walk right there, only the 76th walk by the pitching staff. Foul back, one strike. Kirby at first base, the first base coach, helping Casilla read the signs. It's Anthony Swarzak warming up. One strike to McLeod. You know, Casilla was given every opportunity many times to win a regular job with the Twins. And it just didn't happen. There were shortcomings to be sure, but the one thing we never saw him do is get picked off very often or be the least bit timid about trying to steal a base. He was a pretty aggressive and very successful 
base stealer. Up and away, one and one. We mentioned it before, three for three this year in stolen base attempts as a twin over seven seasons. 71 stolen bases in 80 attempts. One and one to McLeod. Outs have been hard to come by the last few innings. Probably too much to ask to have two outs on one pitch. Ooh, that one darted on Domit. Inside two and one. McLeod, pretty good handler of a bat right here. Two one count. Might see Casilla. Maybe a hit and run put on by Buckshaw Walter. These are the situations managers like. Long hold by Fiend and a look over. Two and one to Nate McLeod. See it stays put and Fiend bends a breaking pitch over that outside corner. It's a nice relaxing ball game for five innings. <laughs> no tension here at Target Field. Two and two to Nate McLeod. Casilla goes. A pitch swung on and missed. Dolmich's throw skips into center field. And Casilla will go to third. Dolmich's throw nowhere near the base. Well, sometimes, you know, you try to get that ball quickly out of your hand. Maybe slipped out of his hands. The ball ended up only missing the bag by about 20 feet. In the center field. Ball slipping out of his hand, I guarantee you, right here. And I think Jamie Carroll had a better chance of catching that ball than uh, Escobar. Marvin Hudson, the second base umpire. <laughs> well, Fiend does pick up the second out on the strikeout, but you see it at third base. And now Machado, who bunted his way aboard in the seventh, now has Plouffe playing even with the bag at third. Machado takes strike one. Happened in the Texas series where the Rangers, uh, trying to think who it was now, dropped a bunt down in front of Plouffe. Here in the last homestand with two outs, an RBI single. Right off the end of the bat, Machado tried to hit it into the grandstand. Yeah, high breaking ball right there, and Machado fouled it off. So two strikes, Fiend trying to weave his way around a one out walk, a stolen base. Second twins error of the night. Two strikes to Machado. Struck him out. And Fiend gets the job done and enjoys his walk off the mound.
Welcome back to Target Field. Twins and Orioles tied as we head to the bottom of the eighth. Be sure to stick around after the game for Twins Live, presented by CenturyLink. We'll talk about Joe Maurer continuing his hot streak at the plate. Also, Baltimore seeing double tonight to rally them in this game. We'll also hear from manager Ron Gardenhire. So stick around for Twins Live. Dick and Bert. Thank you, Jamie. Maurer will hit third this inning. Escobar takes outside ball one. First Escobar, then Carroll, then Maurer. Facing Tommy Hunter here in the Twins eight. Escobar hitless. Two strikeouts and a ground ball to short. And we've seen a lot more of that from Escobar. The swings and misses. Went down swinging twice earlier tonight. One and one. Swing and a foul. One and two. Ball down there. Come on, ball him. Hunter made 20 starts last year for the Orioles and he ended up winning seven ball games, lost eight. But in September, he had a very good month of September when they put him in the bullpen. He went 3 and 0, had a great ERA. And I think one reason why this year he's found himself in that bullpen. Kind of a long man, got a great arm, very resilient. Had some success as a starter, won 13 ball games with the Rangers back in 2010. But the Orioles see him as in this position right here, kind of a seventh, eighth inning type guy. One of 19 different players to win a game for the Orioles. 18 of them were pitchers. Chris Davis got a win, pitching in a marathon extra inning game. Some sliced foul, two and two. First three weeks of the season, Escobar was the Twins' best hitter. He didn't get a chance to play much. Remember what? One point, I think he was uh, 13 for 26 or something mm -hmm. like that, hitting 500. This one driven to left, and McLeod back. A couple of steps makes the catch, one away. And it'll bring up Jamie Carroll. Come on, Jamie, come on. Jared Burton getting loose, presumably the closer today if the Twins get the lead here in the eighth. Otherwise, we might see Swarzak. Maybe Fiend would be asked to go another inning. And you know, the Twins bullpen a little tapped out, particularly from the left side. Carroll single to start the game, scored in the first inning. Fouled away, one strike. One and one to Jamie Carroll. Chopper to short. Hardy has to hurry. Gets Carroll by a step, two down. Century link to what's next. Joe Maurer already has three hits tonight. He'll look for a fourth. Uh, Joe Maurer in the first inning a double that got over the head of Dickerson in right field and then a big two run single that put the Twins up three nothing in the second inning and then in the sixth inning oh yeah another double for Joe Maurer. So Maurer with three hits and the average up to 323. Two down nobody on. Maurer takes ball one. Powers faced Hunter a dozen times, four hits, including a home run the very first time he faced him. A high fly to center field. Jones going back. And about 395 feet from home plate, the third out to the ninth in a tie game.
powerful dramatic music there for the ninth inning. <laughs> six six our score and Jared Burton. Who comes into the ball game here in a tie game but. For the twins of the home team this is a role that or an inning that we might have seen Glenn Perkins pitch in. I guess it's uh, speculation but it might be that Burton is the twins closer tonight the twins are just using him in the ninth in a tie game. Remember Burton worked in last night's ball game one shot out inning in that five to three win over the Red Sox but he did throw twenty five pitches in that one inning. Well this is something that you wouldn't have had seen from Burton last year at this time because he is still recovering from that shoulder surgery but uh, here he is back to back days especially going 25 pitches just the second time this year that's happened it mm -hmm. happened uh, in Chicago back in April and it's uh, we have a little rain shower hitting us here here's Marcus then Jones and Davis the three four and five batters for Baltimore and Burton starts him with a strike. We saw in the eighth inning Anthony Swarzak warming up and then he was shut down Burton instead getting the ninth if we go beyond this we might see Swarzak again but right. there's a swing and a miss and a weak one 0 and 2. Well that's that change up right there that Burton has great movement on looks like a fastball great arm motion and that you can saw the sink right there on that last pitch. Tapper right side. One down. The reason the Twins haven't had a left handed pitcher come out of the pen yet, and it goes beyond Dunsing pitching in back to back games, but it's three out of the last four. He pitched in three games at Fenway Park in the four days there. And Glenn Perkins pitching in the last two games and getting a no decision and a save, but Perkins. Uh, Twins want to try to keep him out of tonight's game. He's got the hoodie up. He's just a spectator tonight as well. Land line drive, base hit, left field. Jones with a single, with one out in the ninth inning. Yeah, Jones picking up his second hit, jumped on that first pitch from Burton, and lined it in the left field. So a one out single and that brings up Davis who has hit three doubles tonight. the last two have been almost carbon copies of one another. That's dating myself there's a more contemporary term for that what would it be. Deja vu. Yeah. No. How about the same hanging breaking ball. <laughs> that <That'd> work. That's, <laughs> that's kind of what led to them. Yeah. One strike. They both were hit to the same spot in the ballpark. One probably should have been caught by Arcia. Burton trying to get this game to the bottom of the ninth tied. One strike to Davis. And Davis swinging like he's never seen that changeup before. And it is his first plate appearance against Burton. That's a nasty pitch. Two strikes to Chris Davis. There goes Jones. And Dolman's throw. That was a nice catch by Escobar. He had to come in front of the bag to field the hop. But it's a stolen base for Jones. And now a 1 2 count to Davis. Yeah, Jones gets his fifth stolen base of the year, the third stolen base of the ballgame. And the one hop right there that Escobar has to play on that short hop. Jones slides off the bag, but you can see Escobar's momentum. He cannot get back to tag Jones before he gets his hand back on the bag. So now the go ahead run at second. One out. And Burton could use a strikeout. His strikeout pitch, of course, is the changeup. Oh. 
And there's a strikeout. Put it in an awfully tough spot yeah, to sure. hit. My goodness. That's Two a down. pitcher's pitch right there. Davis, of course, wants to open up and drive that ball out of the ballpark. And Burton picking up a big strikeout. Do a little pitch by pitch right here. I mean, that's there's that changeup right there. And another good changeup. See if he can tell me if there's a fastball in this situation here, the stolen base. And then the other good changeup, great location down in the strike zone. Wieters will be intentionally walked. To fill first base. And JJ Hardy will come up. Yankees have beaten the Royals 11 to 6. Detroit beat Cleveland 10 to 4. Right now, the Angels leading the White Sox 7 5. Twins had a six nothing lead in this game, but then a three run sixth was backed up by a three run seventh. A lot of runners in scoring position for both clubs. And that's the case facing J.J. Hardy here. Came up in the sixth inning in a spot like this, delivered a double. Two on, two out. Just off the outside corner, ball one. Fly ball, center field, hit right at Aaron Hicks. Good inning for Burton. The Orioles strand two. The Twins will set their three, four, and five batters up at the bottom of the inning. And five batters, Marquecas, Jones, and Davis in the top of the ninth. The Twins will counter with uh, Willingham, Morno, and Plouffe. Well, you know what? I had a call in the fifth inning when Justin was up. Yep. All right, and he ended up walking, so I get that call back. And I just have a feeling that Mr. Willingham is going to end this ball game. Well, I got the feeling we're not going to go to the tenth inning, but I got our seal. He's going to get a big hit. He's going to end the game. Okay. With a big hit. Well, Willingham has five home runs again. Three of them coming here at Target Field. His last one in Detroit against Max Scherzer. Late May last year, Willingham hit his most dramatic home run as a twin.
game winner three run home run against Brian Fuentes of the A's and he takes a strike. A slider away. I don't want to hit that one out. Willingham drove in a run with a ground ball in the first hit another ground ball in the second hit by a pitch in the fifth and intentionally walked in the sixth. Just off the outside corner one and one. And Hunter has allowed three home runs this year. Two and one. Jack to swing. It's three and two. Hunter with a big issue with home runs last year. He mentioned won seven ball games, 133 innings, but 32 home runs mm. on a home run every four innings. Well, Adam pitched about 280 innings. He would have passed me. Full count to Willingham. Sliced foul. Fastball at 95. Another 3 2 to Josh Willingham. Struck him out. Yeah, big swing right there, but Hunter picks up his second strikeout in relief. And now to give you an updated look at our AT&T Twitter poll series, we're asking you what's your favorite fish name in baseball? Catfish Hunter. Mike Trout marginally ahead of Hunter. Kevin Bass. What about Randy Bass? I'll tell you what, there's some great names right there. Tim great Salmon. pitching names. Here's Morno. Just outside, ball one. We'll continue throughout this series on fishing opener weekend. That's the theme of the weekend. Two and out. Hunter fell behind Willingham, came back to strike him out. Three and O to Morno with Blue on deck. No activity in the Oriole bullpen. Swarzak, as predicted, warming up in the Twins bullpen. Three and O. A high pop up, of course, green lighted, and this yes. hit a mile in the air. Two down. If he'd hit it out as far as he did up, we'd be walking home. Two down. Bloof with hits his last two times up. Four home runs on the year for Bloof. Down low, ball one. He had two of those uh, home runs in Cleveland. His last home run here came against the Angels in the middle of April. One and oh. Two and oh. No Hunter tempting fate here. He fell behind Willingham, came back to strike him out, and survived a 3 0 pitch to Morno, getting him to pop up to first. Now two and oh to Ploof. Breaking pitch, taken for a strike. Strike two. Hunter consistently at 96 miles per hour with a fastball. Two and two to the Twins' third baseman. 
Driven to the right field corner, but foul. Thirty five pitches for Hunter. Another two two. High fastball got him. And Hunter cuts through the three, four, and five batters for the Twins, sending us to the tenth. Link's beef jerky all season long. Jack Link's beef jerky feed your wild side. Last year the Orioles won the or got into postseason play because they were unbeatable in extra innings. They've actually lost a couple of times already this year in extra innings, and that's where we're headed here tonight. Yeah, Twins uh, in their fourth extra inning ball game. Twins are one and two. Orioles are two and two. And Anthony Swarzak comes out of the Twins pen to yes. face Chris Dickerson, Alexi Casilla, and Nate McLeod. Yeah, Swarzak last pitched in that first game in Boston. He pitched three shutout innings. The Twins lost that ball game six to five in 11 innings, but uh, Swarzak had a very good outing. Only allowed a couple hits, no runs, with four strikeouts. Dickerson, who is one for four. And Casilla, who's two for three, and McLeod, who's one for five. Swarzak's win this year coming in Baltimore back on April 7th in that four to three win over the Orioles. Fastball at the knees, strike one. Driven to right field, and Arcia plays it on a hop. A leadoff single for Dickerson. Yeah, Dickerson picking up his second hit of the ball game. Then we'll see what the Orioles do here with Casilla. Pretty good bet he'll be bunting here. Wayne Kirby has to get Dickerson's attention. Say, hey, put across the way, we're putting a sign on here. Bobby Dickerson over at uh, third base going through the signs. Casilla with a couple of singles and a walk, two stolen bases. He's looking for the bunt. And a throw over to see if Casilla maybe shows bunt. And he did. But I think we're all expecting it anyway, right? It down. No. It hit Casilla. They're saying in the batter's box. Strike one. 
Buck Showalter coming out. I didn't see it hit Casilla at all. Bruce Breckman, a home plate umpire, saying that ball came up and uh, got a piece of Casilla. And I'm quite sure that Buck Showalter's got a better look at it than he did. Don't see any contact no. right there, but uh, Dickerman, excuse me, uh, Breckman, very, very uh, sure that this ball mm. hit Casilla. It did not. It would have been a good sacrifice. Instead, it's strike one. Low throw, and Carroll has to dig out a sinker. Carroll with a nice pickup. They got the out. And on the play, Dickerson, Chris Dickerson, goes to second base. A sacrifice by Casilla. He does his job, gets Dickerson in the scoring position. Boy, nice, uh, nice pickup wow. by Jamie Carroll. So where's that throwing a little sinker over there for the first out? So one out, go ahead, run at second. And McLeod the batter. Down and away, ball one. McLeod with a double and a run scored in the seventh. Bean struck him out in a big spot on the eighth. At the knees, one and one. Yeah, McLeod came up to the majors with the Pittsburgh Pirates back in 2005. Also spent time with the Braves. Been a good player for the Orioles, signed as a minor league free agent. Mm -hmm. Missing the inside corner, two and one. Good years with the Pirates. He made the All Star team for the Pirates back in 2008. A stealer with some power. Two and one. Three and one on with Machado on hey, deck. Smart now. Come on, dude. He's smart. Here we go. Three and one to Nate McLeod to center, short center. Hicks coming in. And a base hit. And he may have decoyed Dickerson a little bit there. Dickerson kind of froze at second base on a ball that Hicks clearly could not have caught. So a base hit sending Dickerson to third. Ball just kind of jammed out toward the short center. And Dickerson, you know, you turn around at second base, you see where the outfielders are playing, but. Ball kind of looked like it was going to drift into center field a little bit further than it did. I thought, especially the way Hicks came in, that he was measuring it for a catch. But right. so Dickerson doesn't score on the 170 foot single to center. First and third, one down. Here's Machado. Shadow with a pair of singles. Only hit the ball on the ground once. Twins are hoping to get a double play here and get off the field. Well, Bean was able to strike him out in the eighth inning, his last at bat. One and oh.
roll through the right side. The Orioles have their first lead. So Machado hits the ground ball, but he pushed it through the right side, and the Orioles have come back from 6 0 to now take a 7 6 lead. Uh, inside out swing right there. Machado picks up his third hit of the ball game. And picks up his 23rd RBI. Put in on the trademark. Yeah. So 7 6 Baltimore. That'll get Jim Johnson warming up for the Orioles. Mark Kankis has reached three times. Couple of hits and a walk. <laughs> and strike one. Wins at one time after five innings had a six nothing lead. Orioles tied it up by the seventh inning. Now they've taken a one run lead here in the tenth. One and one. Popped up to left field. Willingham with McLeod running well, setting up for a tag. There's Willingham's throw to the plate, not in time. A sacrifice fly and on the play Machado goes to second base so a two run Oriole lead now in the 10th inning. Marquez is picking up his second RBI of the ball game. And with McClouth and his speed. You know, Willingham okay arm but uh, McClouth scores a second run. Twins are due to send up Doma Garcia and Hicks in the 10th. Jones the batter. With the Orioles up by a pair. <laughs> Fouled away, one strike. Baltimore's trip to Minnesota this weekend, the extent of their road trip. They played Kansas City three times in Baltimore, and then after this game, they head home for another week and a half. One strike to Jones. To left center field, and another Oriole run. Jones held to a single with a good retrieve by Hicks. With three runs in the tenth. The third three run inning for the Orioles tonight. Yeah, Jones picking up his third hit, driving in his 24th run. Breaking ball left up. Jones hit it in that gap as Machado scoring the third run. So now Chris Davis will bat. Twins bullpen, uh, one of the main reasons the Twins won the last three games at Fenway Park. Well, Josh Renicky gave up three runs in the seventh. Anthony Swarzak's given up at least three here in the tenth. Regardless of whether the Twins come back and tie it up or win it. In the bottom of the tenth, we're going to need some innings from Vance Worley tomorrow, mm -hmm. and Scott Diamond on Sunday. Roller to short, and Escobar ends the inning. But another three-run inning for the Orioles, and it's nine to six.
the Orioles got three in the sixth, three in the seventh, and now three in the tenth. So it is a save situation for uh, Jim Johnson, who unassumingly has become one of the best closers in the game. Well, Johnson coming in, you can see making his 19th relief appearance, 13 for 13 and save opportunities. He's a pitch to contact closer since we were talking about uh, pitch to contact the pitching before. Well, he kind of came out of nowhere last year. 51 saves. He led Major League Baseball with 51 saves last year for the Orioles. And he saved 34 opportunities in a row going back to July 30th of last year. So it'll be Ryan Doma trying to get on base. You look at how the Orioles took the lead. They got a leadoff single, a sacrifice bunt, a couple more singles, a sacrifice fly, another single. And Doma taps it to the right side. Easy play for Casilla. One down, the leadoff man is gone. That'll bring up Arcia. You know, you get three runs in an extra inning game, you figure, well, if not a home run, there's got to be an extra base hit in there someplace. But the Orioles just, you know, pinged the ball around, got some singles, and Two of the three outs were sacrifice outs. Garcia with a pair of singles and an RBI ground ball. Strike one. I can see Johnson, a hard throwing right hander, fastball, curveball, changeup. Tied right now with Randy Myers for the franchise leader in consecutive saves with 34. I just think he went the last two months in the glare of the pennant race and converted every save for the Orioles last year. And a month and a half or so into this season, he's clicked on every one. Here's a fly to left. And McLeod runs toward the line. Out number two. And that'll bring up Aaron Hicks. Uh, excuse me, Hicks is going to be pinch hit for by Chris Parmalee. That's how Johnson gets the job done. He he makes you put the ball in play. If anything, his strikeouts are up higher this year than they were last year in terms of strikeouts per innings pitched. And strike one to Parmley. Well, you see, no fooling around, you know, just strike one, get ahead. Here it is, hit it. And more often than not, they hit it into the ground. And Parmalee, it's a pinch hit off the bench. And that'll bring up Wilkin Ramirez. Well, that at bat, very important for Parmalee right there. He's been working a lot with Tom Bernanski on just kind of shortening his swing a little bit. He hadn't played in two or three days. Marcia getting more of the playing time, and Parmalee getting an opportunity to get at that at bat. Takes that fastball. And hits it sharply in the left field. Shortening his swing and yet quickening it up. They, yeah. they thought that the pitches were eating him up. He wasn't uh, making contact out front enough. So here's Wilkin Ramirez in their strike one. Trying to keep the game alive for Jamie Carroll. Which don't have a lot of Hop on the bench, but they're using what they have here. Ramirez fouls it off a leg. Two strikes. And the Twins hoping Ramirez can keep the game alive for Carroll, who can do that for Maurer. Down to their last out. White Sox lost 7 5 to the Angels. And that takes care of it. Ramirez is gone on three pitches. Pretty impressive comeback by the Orioles, who did this a lot last year, but disappointing loss for the Twins. You had a six nothing lead at these, home. These losses hurt right here. You'd rather lose one to nothing than the way the Twins lost tonight. That six nothing lead, and then the Orioles scored the last nine runs. Not a good game for the Twins. So. Tom Hanneman continuing an unfortunate pattern. The Twins lose the opening game of a series. They'll try to come back and 
win the series uh, starting tomorrow night. Dick, thanks. Twins lose the series opener now in nine of their 12 series this season. An empty feeling tonight as Baltimore comes back with a big rally. Twins Live is up next.